Right, welcome to the uh, Tuesday, April 16th Select Board meeting. We are meeting on Tuesday this week because of the Monday holiday, and uh, it would be impossible to proceed with this meeting without acknowledging the terrible tragedy that happened yesterday in Boston. Um, so I think it's probably most appropriate to take a moment of silence for those who, who died and were injured and were otherwise impacted by this horrible event in our capital city. Thank you very much. Um, because of the, the scale of this tragedy, uh, what it really means to, to the Commonwealth, uh, to the United States and beyond, uh, it seemed appropriate to mark this and uh, Mr. Wald's suggestion. I've written a letter on behalf of the Select Board that I hope we'll be willing to sign tonight. And this is from the Select Board on behalf of the community. So if you don't mind, I'll just take a moment to read it. It's addressed to uh, Mayor Thomas Menino. It says, Dear Mayor Menino, the Amherst Select Board wishes to convey our community's deepest sympathies for this horrific tragedy. Amherst shares your shock and grief for the outrage committed on one of Boston's most magical days at one of its most beloved events. Despite all the sadness and fear, your city has inspired us. The selflessness and true heroism of first responders, marathon staff and volunteers, hospital personnel, and countless regular folks makes us all proud. The reports of great kindness, like people opening their homes to runners and their families, help heal our broken hearts. We hope city residents find comfort in the support of Boston's extended family spread across the Commonwealth, the United States, and the world. Through your magnificent colleges and universities, hospitals, museums, sports teams and athletic events, historic and cultural attractions, and more. The web of people with enduring ties to the city is vast, and all of us stand with you now. Wishing you continued strength and courage as you lead Boston through this trying time. Sincerely, the Amherst Select Board. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Okay, so we will make sure all to sign that before we leave uh, today. Could we stick that in that folder? For if there's one in there. Is that the second one? I'm not sure if they're all on letterhead or not. Um, okay, so we will start with some untimed items. We don't have anyone here for public comment tonight. Um, so we might as well start at the top. The top item is setting the fee for liquor licenses at agricultural events. Um, we had a, an, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Alsasha, would you like to make some public comment this evening? Certainly, please come forward and introduce yourself for folks at home. My name is Bill Alsasha at the Ann Whalen. Uh, last year I was at the, uh, moving toward the Survival Center from the main corner of North Amherst and uh, there was a, a pall of smoke such as I had rarely seen in my life an acrid scent uh, <clears throat> and the entire uh, uh, area was impacted in ambiance to such a degree that I almost f literally fell off my feet. And there were two large yellow vehicles with the uh, insignia Gallagher on them, and they were uh, there were flames pouring out from underneath the vehicles. It was like some mephitic vision, and someone informed me, uh, a flag lady, that. This was uh, saving the town of Amherst 80% uh, uh, in terms of budgetary wherewithal for resurfacing the, uh, the roads. Mm. Uh, what it was doing is uh, literally impacting the entire environment of the, uh, the earth. Do I know any more than that? I do not. Thank you very much. Appreciate your feedback. Okay, thank you for coming in tonight. Okay, so the untimed item, setting fee for a liquor license at an agricultural event. Um, 
We do not have an application before us at this time, but we expect to receive one. Um, we have once before given a license to a, uh, a uh, meadery, in fact, a, a winery that makes mead, um, to sell at a farmer's market. And at that time, we charged those folks $50 for that license, and I don't know exactly how that, how that was determined. But um, since then, there has been a state law uh, regarding such things, and that state law now requires that the select board set a fee for the liquor license, and in fact, it caps that at $50. <laughs> so, um, so before we get an application, which is anticipated, um, the office would like us to make sure that we have set the fee so we have a formal motion here to take care of having set that and that will then be on our fee schedule going forward. Anyone have any questions or comments about that issue? Ms. Stein, would you like to make the motion? Yes, if I was sure where the motion was, I would be happy to read it. Here we go. <laughs> Special license fee for sale of wine. That's the one. I move that the select board vote to set the fee for a special license for sale of wine produced by a licensed farmer-winery for off-premises for off-premise consumption at indoor or outdoor agricultural events should be an S at $50 for each license granted. Second. For the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Mr. Hayden, I'll mention that when you were absent last week, we just we barely could proceed without having your your seconds, and then it making motions and it would just be dead silent. Then it was really terrible because we were afraid we couldn't adjourn without you. So we almost didn't. That's right. We almost didn't. We almost didn't yeah. Okay. Next up on untimed items, uh, seasonal liquor license renewal. We have only one seasonal liquor license these days, and it is for Cherry Hill Golf Course. Ms. Stein. I move that the select board renew the seasonal wine and malt liquor license for Cherry Hill Golf Course, 323 <clears throat> Montague Road, Manager Barbara Biltz, for operations from April 1st, 2013 through January 15, 2014. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's unanimous. Ms. Brewer. I am so sorry, but it, could the minutes please reference in the previous item the um, MGL section that that new license is under? Sure. Just so we'll be able to find it again someday. Very good. Okay. They uh, so hopefully provided it to us. We've got a couple more minutes, so we might as well do the parking and street closure requests. I move that the select board approve the reservation of metered parking spaces on the east and west side of Boltwood Avenue between Spring Street and College Street on May 8th, 9th, 13th, and 14th, 2013 for events at the Lord Jeffrey Inn. Second. Further discussion? Indeed. All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Uh, let's see. We've got minutes. Are folks ready to approve the minutes from March 4th, 18th, and April 8th? I am. They were very clean. There are a few very minor um, changes, and they're editorial rather than substantive. <laughs> very well. Is it, uh, does anyone have a problem with the, approving the minutes today? All right, Ms. Stein. I move that the select board approve the minutes of March 4th, 2013, March 18th, 2013, and April 8th, 2013, as amended. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Would you, you please put me down as an abstention? Oh, please. certainly. I really didn't read them. <laughs> <laughs> no clip. Or in I'm favor, sure one abstention. And they are lovely. They really are lovely. All right, so we are, I believe, fully caught up on minutes, which is wonderful. Thanks again to Ms. Roussel in the office for keeping us current with that. Um, I think our last untimed item that we could do is a committee appointment. Okie dokie. I move that the select board approve Nancy Pagano to the Kanakasaki Sister City Committee, two words missing, for a term expiring June 30th, 2016. Further discussion? 
Mr. Musanti, would you like to comment on a staff member being appointed as a voting member? Uh, sure. Uh, this is uh, really to address a, uh, uh, there's a couple of vacancies on that committee. And like the AGCOM, I believe they were having difficulty achieving quorum. And Nancy's been a long serving, uh, very hardworking staff support. And so as a practical matter, I was comfortable with the notion of her being appointed so they could actually execute committee business uh, as opposed to just talk about it endlessly. Thank you very much. Uh, for the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 That's four in favor, one absent. Okay, Ms. Brewer has stepped out of the room for a moment in case anyone is wondering why suddenly we have an absence. Okay, uh, let's see. So did she vote or? No, okay. so we'll just put that down as yeah. four. Extension? Four in favor, one. Okay. It's technically absent rather than an okay. abstention. Um, okay, so it is 6.44. I believe we're out of untimed items. Is that right? I think so. Am I missing anything? Okay, then we will say that, as we like to say here, 6.44 is the same as 6.45. <coughs> and is there everything okay? Okay. Uh, so 6.44 is the same as 6.45. Our 6.45 item is our post-election reorganization vote. This is something that the select board does after every annual town election, every election, other election that has a select board member's seat <coughs> up for, um, for election or any time a uh, select board member or uh, any time a an officer on the select board um, voluntarily resigns. So since we had the annual town election last week and Mr. Wald and Ms. Brewer were reelected without opposition, thank you for your continued service, uh, it is time for us to have another reorganization vote. So as we do this every year, uh, I will hand this over to Mr. Musanti for our election. Uh, thank you, and um, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, I'll ask for nominations, uh, and then we'll have a motion. So are there any nominations for chair? Ms. Stein? I move that we elect Stephanie O'Keefe as chair again because she does a much more stellar job than any of the other of us could do. <laughs> <laughs> you got okay. that right. <laughs> okay, that nomination has been made and seconded. Are there any other nominations for chair? Okay, hearing none, uh, um, all, uh, so we'll come to a vote. All those in favor uh, of Stephanie O'Keefe for uh, chair of the select board, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. I, don't know I, I held my breath abstained. for fear <laughs> that Thank she you. would vote no. So the motion carries. Congratulations. It would be against Again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I appreciate very much the select board's continued faith and trust in me in this role. So thank you. Okay, so then we now have uh, nominations for clerk. Ms. Stein. I nominate Aaron Hayden as clerk because I hate to see things change. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is abstentions, opposition. No, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you decide to vote or abstain? I abstained on mine. But yeah. Okay. Um, and so then we also have the question of vice clerk, uh, vice chair rather, um, which is something that for many years the select board has rotated. I'm not sure how much uh, awareness into this the outside world has, but, uh, but the select board has for a long time rotated this monthly and alphabetically. And uh, while that might seem a little bit weird from the outside, it certainly seemed a little weird to me from the outside, it actually works very well. <laughs> so. Uh, at this point, we need to either reaffirm or vote <coughs> to change that, uh, that rotation. Ms. Stein. I move that the select board continue the current practice of rotating chair, vice chair position monthly. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Change. All right, so everything stays the same. Mm -hmm. We are such a stable select board, I tell you. All right. Very good, so moving along. 
<coughs> moving along. The battery's dying in my recorder. Okay. Um, anybody have any announcements or anything that they would like to talk about before we get to the 650 item? I'd rather <coughs> not start that early. Anything upcoming that folks should know about? Well, yes. Ms. Stein. There is an open house on Saturday the 20th at Craig's Stores from 1 to 5. So that will be at the First Baptist Church in the, the shelter area? Correct. Craig's Stores, 1 to 5. Thank you. Um, and I'll also remind folks the same announcement that uh, we made last week uh, and that was also on the town website that on... Monday, April 29th at 5 p.m. preceding the select board meeting, we will have a coffee hour reception <coughs> for Harrison Gregg, honoring his long service as town moderator. Um, the public is more than welcome, very invited to attend and, uh, and express their great fondness and appreciation to Mr. Her uh, to Mr. Gregg for that service. So uh, I, hope that, I hope all the select board members can make it and I hope that uh, many of the public can make it. So that's from five to six, essentially on the uh, Monday the 29th. Ms. Stein. I have another announcement. <laughs> Thank goodness for calendars. Um, on April 29th, people who have um, pharmaceutical type drugs to um, dispose of and want to do so <coughs> safely, there um, is going to be a uh, collection at Wildwood. And I can't tell you the exact time but the box at the police station is not accepting anymore. So people who do want to dispose of these safely should check um, on the 29th what the hours are. Thank you very much. Ms. Brewer. We need to put something about that on the town website because I just got my sticker on Saturday and I picked up a flyer that said to take things to the police station. So uh -huh. uh, <laughs> if it's, we're not doing that anymore, then close. that, needs, then that oh. needs to be changed. And I know that, that was, we were lucky to have that service here in uh -huh. town that you could do at any time, whereas lots of places right. you can only do it on these irregular things. Um, I trotted down there with my little bag and I so saw the sign. Yeah, <coughs> that would be good for the transfer station to change that flyer and also to put a quick note on the town website that it's no longer possible to do it. Okay, perfect. Now we're at 6.50. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, so now uh, we have our uh, personnel board recommendation on the FY14 non-union COLA. That's the cost of living adjustment. We have Human Resources Director Deb Radway here to talk to us about this. This is an annual recommendation that gets made to us. Um, this is actually the town manager's recommendation uh, after he has coordinated with the um, the personnel board we have um, an excellent memo explaining the situation as well as a historical cola chart in the packet and that is available on the website for folks following along at home so before I turn it over to Miss Radway Mr. Musanti would like to introduce us to this sure uh, and I want to start by uh, commending Deb Radway for her uh, ongoing excellent work as HR director and it's uh, shows itself every day in, in some new initiative or, or improved upon practice related to working with all of our staff. Um, so very briefly on the, for the non-union portion of the workforce, uh, at the uh, February meeting of the personnel board, uh, the personnel board endorsed my recommendation, recommended 2% uh, cost of living adjustment for non-union employees for the fiscal year beginning July 1st. Uh, the personnel board also encouraged me to consider additional sources of compensation for non-union. Um, the 2% figure is based upon uh, our best judgment of uh, local and statewide uh, labor cost trends uh, and my assessment of the town's ability to pay the fiscal condition of the town which I articulated in the uh, budget proposal I presented back in January which is basically hasn't changed uh, in terms of the status um, this uh, recommendation was endorsed by the personnel board and then as we do each year in a more formal way we had a non-union employee meeting uh, with myself and Deb and, and the personnel board members uh, uh, in late March 
uh, we shared this information and uh, got questions and comments uh, from that. I also announced at that meeting that we would be uh, implementing a health insurance premium holiday for the month of April uh, because of our continuing uh, positive uh, health cost claims uh, in comparison to budget. Uh, we're in a position where we can forego withholding of premiums by uh, employees uh, for the month of April. It also saves the town and the schools and library money in our budget for our share of that month's premium. It saved uh, every employee who was on a, a health plan anywhere from $115 to $385 during the month of April, depending on what plan they were on. Uh, so that was a very positive thing. Uh, also, uh, uh, I explained in the memo, uh, and the personnel board will be involved in this as well, but as we get into the summer and fall uh, working, to uh, on a uh, compensation study for a non-union group. Um, uh, we haven't done a comprehensive compensation study since uh, an in-house version back in 2007. Um, this will allow us to uh, uh, really look at the, the marketplace in a more detailed manner by job title. Uh, and we'll look at the structure of our compensation plan as well, and that would be the basis for recommendations that would come back uh, to me and through the personnel board for consideration later in the in the calendar year. Thank you. And very much. Deb is here to fill in all those blanks that I left out of that summary, <laughs> but or answer questions. Good evening. I really don't have anything prepared uh, for this. I really did think I was just going to be here to support the town manager and I'll, I'll just add that um, I think that the compensation study <coughs> is a very important thing to embark on uh, for the town. I think it's important to do an arm's length professional analysis of the entire plan. There's, there's 75 people on the plan, 48 different positions and it's time to, to relook at the whole structure. And I'm hoping that we can have um, and uh, get some uh, quotes from from cons professional consultants uh, in early summer, uh, execute a contract, conduct the study during the late summer and early fall, and have something um, for the town manager and your review uh, mid-October, early November, certainly before the end of the calendar year. and and in good preparation for the next fiscal year budget. Thank you very much. Questions or comments from the select board? Ms. Stein is our representative to the personnel board. Would you, uh, or liaison rather, would you have anything to add? Um, no, I think the study is a really good idea, um, both because, as Ms. Radway pointed out, to the personnel board, our system of multiple steps um, within a position level is kind of archaic. And so I think this makes a lot of sense. And also I think it's important for non-union personnel to know just how their salary fits into a bigger uh, overview. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that'll be a healthy, healthy outcome. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments? And I meet tomorrow. And they meet tomorrow, oh, very good. Um, I appreciate the information very much. I think that the recommendation is, is just as fair as it can be given the circumstances. We continue to sort of struggle to come out of the recovery, the economic recovery, um, particularly at the state level and with the state aid made available to communities. Um, I think that while, while folks, uh, of course, would prefer to have more than 2%, um, considering the compensation study and considering the fact that there is a... Uh, no increase in the health insurance premiums for next year. I think that, um, like I said, that it just is just as fair as can be considering the, the circumstances that we're in. So, um, so I'm fully supportive of the add, recommendation. I, I have done a pretty exhaustive uh, survey of comparable communities uh, and other communities throughout the state. 
And of the 40 that I surveyed, there's really only a handful that did more than 2%. Uh, 2% seems to be the norm throughout the state, um, and often coupled with health insurance increase of between 3 and 12%. Thank you. That's very helpful context. And uh, that will be even more helpful going forward once we have the compensation study. So, uh, so that's great. Um, this is something that we try and do every year before we get into the operating budget, because obviously the operating budget depends a great deal on what salaries are. So, um, so this is something that we do like to have settled beforehand. Um, do we have a formal motion on this? We do. Yes. Okay. I move that the select board authorize a two percent cost of living adjustment, COLA for all non-union step levels effective July 1st, 2013. Second. Further discussion? Mr. Reed? No? Anyone? No? Comment from anyone? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in and, and uh, thank Thanks, you for Deb. the good materials sure. in our web packet. Okay. So 6.59, the same as 7 o'clock. So our next item is except Atkins Corner Altered Road Layouts for West Street, Bay Road, West Bay Road, and two new roads built for the project. We have Mr. Guilford Morning, Morning, Superintendent of Department of Public Works and the newly elected select board member for the town of Hadley <laughs> with us tonight. Welcome. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Congratulations on your fine victory. Um, so we have in our packets information about why we are doing this now and um, that this needs to be done in, uh, in advance of town meeting considering the uh, Article 10. This is it's tied to Article 10, right? So we do this first and then we'll get into all the other street acceptances. Um, there is information, I just said that, in our packet. So go ahead and tell us what you'd like to tell us. Actually, I was thinking that the best way to talk about this, and I can't separate the two without talking about articles, 10 and 11 as well. So I'm going to talk about the, the, both what you have to do now and then articles 10 and 11. Okay. So if you remember way back, we started Atkins, Pro Atkins Corner Project. Um, so this we're now at the last thing we need to do. <laughs> the project is within completion. Construction will be done the end of June. This is, uh, this is the final paperwork wrap up for a, a good part of the project. So, and we did the road, we actually moved the road over to the west, or to the east, and we adjusted some layouts and we widened the road in some places. So to do that, you've authorized several times uh, the town to take easements for drainage and for the public way and so forth. So now what we're doing is we're gonna do the final paperwork wrap up and accept those as public ways. Technically, they haven't been public ways yet, they were under construction. They've all been donated to the town or gifted to the town for some some um, amount of money, and now the process is that we accept the roads and bring it into the fold as a true town way, and then we own it and we maintain it for the rest of the rest of the world. Uh, we also, when we move the road, we move the road out of its current layout, and the current layout is now in the middle of Atkins parking lot, and we need to discontinue that layout so that it can be uh, owned by Atkins Corner and not owned by the town. So. That's the whole process we're going through here. So they all go together. The first step of accepting it is that, as, the, um, as our town attorney says, um, the select board will vote at a meeting its intention to lay out the Atkins Corner right away. And that's actually the, the item that's before you now. You have specific language that was laid out by the town attorney which states that you are laying out this roadway and you'll send this, once you vote to do this, you'll also send a notice to the planning board and they'll weigh in and make a decision as well as what they think of the accepting the road layouts and they'll forward that to town meeting as well. So the select board has to, what you're going to do tonight is in give your intention to select lay out the roadway and then we'll go to town meeting and then we'll actually go through the process of actually taking the layouts and making them public ways. So that's what we're doing tonight and we're starting the final process of the project, which is great. That's great. Questions or comments about this for Mr. Mooring? Ms. Reed. Uh, I think I'm going to miss this. We spoke about this every six months for the last <laughs> five years, and uh, we forgot that the community were with the underneath the golf and balls, and then again to get underneath the clock tops and, and stuff like that. I um, just want to recall that, that Steph and I went out and walked the site here 
All right, and to uh, elaborate on Mr. Hayden's point, um, so this was in fact a county road previously, and so the, the layout had gone entirely outside the bounds of the county road. So to kind of start more of this process, we had uh, several months ago a uh, discontinuance hearing by the, uh, by the Hampshire Council of Governments who had sort of authority over the road, so they discontinued it to us, and now we have to go through this process. So anything else we need to know about this part? But we're actually so excited. We're having like a mortgage fire after this project. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say hands over here, Ms. Stein well, and Ms. Brooke. I was just going to make the motion in the terms I think that are appropriate. And if it's not, somebody can correct me. But if Ms. Brewer had something first. Sure, Ms. Brewer. A aside from the fact that I thought that the town attorney told us to say it that way, um, <clears throat> but I'm sure we'll be fine, is this item, the layout modification, then, you know, this is the first step, but then the actual town meeting articles are 10 and 11, right? Correct. Just to make sure I've right. got all the connected dots. All right. Correct. Okay, so Ms. Stein. I move that the select board vote its intention to alter the layouts of portions of Bay Road, West Bay Road, and West Street as public ways to include within said layouts the parcels of land shown on a plan entitled, quote, Plan of Land in the Town of Amherst, Hampshire County, Bay Road, West Bay Road, and West Street, altered and laid out by the Town of Amherst, end quote, dated December 2011, and that the select board forward the alteration of layout petition and plan to the planning board for its comments and recommendations pursuant to GL Chapter 41, Sections 81G and 8, 8 what? 81I. I. 81I. All right, that's what I was having trouble with. Sorry. Second. Further discussion? The right All language. in favor, say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. that, just for clarification, John, that was the language that came to us separately. Um, the move that the select board vote. Yes, that's the correct language and the town and council are in sync on that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now we are going to get into voting and assigning select board positions on town meeting warrant articles. And um, just so you know what the plan is, our goal is basically to get as far as we possibly can through taking positions on these tonight. So. Uh, so Article 16, which is the operating budget, is on there, and we will see how far through that we get. Um, we have incredibly packed agendas for the next two meetings with even more complicated articles. The next meeting is going to be um, zoning and um, and the school and library budgets and the rental regulations and the rental reg petition. Then the following meeting is going to be all of the other petition articles that weren't attached to either zoning or, th or the ones that we will have dealt with already. Um, so we really have a ton going on. So what we're gonna try and do is go through as much of these as possible and at 8.30, we'll see where we are. We'll see if we want to continue to give it, you know, X amount of more time or if we want to stop and, uh, and continue with the operating budget, assuming we get that far, and I'm confident we will, uh, next time. So um, oftentimes we use this, we use our discussions as a big kind of educational opportunity for folks uh, who might be watching this. I don't think this is the best opportunity to do that this year. I think that folks will need to be paying more attention, especially for the operating budget stuff um, we're not going to review that in huge detail all of that information is on the town website plus uh, there have been various you know lots of meetings other uh, that folks can review and and get questions answered so uh, so we'll see how far we get th through this tonight but anyway that is the plan okay so uh, article 6 is a street acceptance for Olympia Drive and we have mr. Zomek and Mr. Perkins here from HAP to talk to us about this. Welcome. Thank you very much. 
As you stated, I'm joined by Rudy Perkins, the project manager from HAP, to talk about one of your favorite projects, uh, Olympia Drive and Olympia Oaks. And uh, given your <coughs> packed agenda, we'll try to be brief and, and uh, give a, a very quick outline and then respond to your questions. Um, discussion of Article 6, um, and again, in your packets, uh, I believe, or at least uh, sent to you by, by Mr. Perkins was a very extensive summary of, of the project where they are from HAP's perspective, and, and uh, I think um, Rudy is here tonight to take questions on that uh, in just a few minutes. Ms. Brewer is going to note that that wasn't in our packets, and that's true. But we did get it by email, by select board email, by email. Um, maybe a week or two ago. I think it was more recent. I think it was yeah. over the weekend, it, actually. This weekend? I thought it was a previous weekend. No. No. This weekend. Oh, okay. Then I, I think. Period. Yeah, I think a lot of that information. I think a lot of that information is no. supplemental to the to the warrant article. This weekend. It's more about the project right. in general. So let me just note that if the select board doesn't feel that they're ready to vote on this tonight, then certainly we can put that off. At the same time, this is sort of a very long and expected step in yes, a process we have been following say. for a very long time. Um, we almost did this in the fall, but because there were still technical things that needed to happen and the town didn't want to, um, to have take, what are we doing? Taken possession of the road? Or taking possession of the road as opposed to giving up the road? Whatever it is we're doing. Accepting, with the accepting. accepting the yeah. road as a public way. Accepting it, right. Um, we didn't want to have that responsibility um, over the snow season, et cetera, when there were still other moving parts going on. So, um, so okay, go ahead. So we did, uh, the town meeting did part of that in the fall. Um, you recall that um, some of, some of the, the, the road acceptance itself was, was essentially, uh, we pulled that back and that was deferred until spring, if you will. Um, but there was the select uh, the town meeting did authorize the select board to acquire easements from UMass for the utilities under the the main road the access road from East Pleasant Street to the site and you you may also recall that legislation has been filed by Senator Rosenberg's office to move uh, that piece forward and and my understanding is that's in committee right now yep. the article six uh, so following up on on some of our actions in the fall we're, we're revisiting <coughs> the road acceptance. We believe we're ready for the road acceptance. And we did um, add one piece to that, which is the need to um, grant utility easements on the site itself. So not on the roadway between East Pleasant Street and the Olympia Oaks site, but actually on the site itself for uh, Wamiko, Verizon, and a few other utility easements. So that is essentially what Article 6 accomplishes. It accepts the road as a public way, and it uh, gives the select board the ability to grant easements for utility work on the site itself, not on the roadway. So that's Article Thank 6. Questions or comments from select board? We can't let this opportunity pass without asking what the status of the project is and how things I'll are going. it over to Mr. Perkins. Well, one of the reasons I, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get it to you earlier, I put together a, a quick update, well, not so quick, update report, and probably the most important piece of that is a summary of the status of the funding, <coughs> because I think that was the main concern in November. Um, since November, DHCD finally uh, agreed to go back. As you may recall, there was a long period of time we were trying to restructure this as a 4% tax credit and bond deal at DHCD's request, went through a long period of time, decided that couldn't work, asked them to let us go back to a 9%, and as of the town meeting, we didn't have a definitive answer from them about that, and as a result, a lot of the funding was up in the air. Um, in late January, we got word from DHCD, they let us go back to a 9% deal. We proceeded to structure that, then they, um, changed it again a couple times, um, but we finally got it nailed down We um, with them about the structure. We have one of their three, well, we have two of their four letters, DHCD's four letters on the funding. Um, we have the HSITF for $1.715 million and an extension on that that carries us now to this new period, and we have the project-based Section 8 subsidies. Um, from the private tax credit syndicators, we have a letter which I included in the, here 
um, a commitment letter for the tax credit equity portion. That's about $8.4 million. And for the construction loan from the Life Initiative, which is uh, $6.3 million outstanding balance and $7.1 million aggregate. The Basically, we've, we've been told that the other couple of letters from DHCD were on the relevant person's desk being signed. We still haven't gotten them in hand. Uh, I should have them before town meeting and can update staff with the remaining letters. Um, but once those come in, let's see, did I miss any that, we've, that I attached? Life, oh, Interfaith Housing had also pledged, um, and we got a renewed letter committing their $100,000 in commitment. Uh, for construction financing. Wamiko actually significantly upped their energy incentive commitment uh, about, it was over a hundred grand uh, increase and uh, that letter was attached, $4,000 per unit in, uh, energy incentives. Um, so with the remaining DHCD letters and uh, the permanent funding letter of 460,000, we have um, gone through the whole discussion and picked the, lend, uh, the lender for that They've uh, given us terms and they're just in their internal process for finalizing the commitment letter. I should have that before town meeting to forward to. But with those pieces in hand, as you can see in the attachments, if you haven't seen them yet, um, that makes all the funding that we need. Um, so unless there's some surprise in the two remaining state letters that they're different from how we've discussed them with staff and what they've told us were coming, um, we think all of the funding is now committed or will be written down and committed shortly. Um, and uh, we're ready to go in the closing process. Now that process will take a few months, um, as anyone who's done one of these complicated things knows. And these are commitment letters, so I just want to make clear there's a lot of conditions in them before the funding is absolute. Um, they, you know, in a typical commitment letter, a lot of things have to come true before they give you the money. Um, so, but they are commitment letters and the conditions are not nothing unusual or unexpected. Um, I can't guarantee that the funding is absolutely there, but this is about as good as you get at the beginning of a, a closing process. You, you got the commitments to do this if everything goes as expected. So that's where we stand. We've um, made the building permit application. Uh, the construction plans were finalized. I think that might have, uh, that actually happened slightly after the town meeting. Um, and now we're just, uh, I'm getting very busy, which means to me the deal is coming together finally um, with many, many documents, but uh, it looks good right now. And so, as you know, we've, we've asked the town to accept the road and um, hope they can do so at the, the spring meeting. Thank you very much. It sure. uh, certainly is an exercise in patience, and it certainly does demonstrate why it is so very complicated and takes a very long time to create affordable housing with public funds. That's a lot different than, than private investment. And uh, thank you for shepherding this th low these many years. Ms. Brewer. So, in theory. Yes. <laughs> If things go approximately the way they should, right? Timing for. I've pegged it at August first as a closing and construction start date. Our general contractor is <laughs> like he's already been asking me when can I start? Right. When can I start? Um, so we will start construction the day we close. Um, if we could, there's even a chance we have to wait for some. There's some preconditions the HUD environmental review and the subsidy layering review, which we have yet to launch because we're waiting on something. But once those are complete, we might even be able to do some preliminary work before the final closing, although I don't want to commit to that. My hope is that uh, certainly by August 1st, well, <laughs> I should never say certainly. <laughs> I let My say hope it. is that it will be August 1st. I'm actually hoping we can get it a start in July. Um, but that would be things going real smoothly and HUD turning around their review in the time that I've heard should happen. Um, and then it's a 12-month construction process. Uh, we were just talking today, if we needed to uh, accelerate the time when the road work was done, <coughs> uh, put that towards the beginning rather towards the end, I'm sure that could happen once we're in construction. 
Thank you very much. Other questions or comments from Select Board? Mr. Eden. Um, I, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I think particularly on the legislative action, just expressing through our representatives the, the importance of this getting high priority in the timing in the legislature, that will help. Um, I, I think, uh, and I don't know what moves HUD, frankly. So I don't know <laughs> if there's any way <laughs> any of us can move HUD uh, faster um, than they're going to move. So. Thank you. Um, did you want to say anything? Uh, just, uh, yeah, we, and staff and I are fully in support of the, the article to accept the road, but uh, also uh, based upon our initial review of the very detailed summary that was contained in that email over the weekend about extending the land development agreement, uh, I think what makes sense is to, is to encourage the board to take action on the article tonight, and we can get you the full text with all the attachment of Mr. Perkins' uh, explanation and we can prepare the appropriate motion perhaps for your next meeting on the extension of the land development agreement uh, uh, through August 31st. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Stein. We can do that next Monday. So we'll go ahead and make the motion about Article 6. That'll be separate. Right. Right. Okay. Um, I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 6 Street Acceptance Olympia Drive. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Appreciate all your good information. All right. Article 7 Street Discontinuance Eastman Lane. Mr. Mooring is here, uh, and this was also part of that same county hearing that Mr. Hayden and I attended uh, several months ago about uh, discontinuing what had been a county road layout to the town, and now uh, the town is looking to discontinue it further. <laughs> Mr. Mooring. Yes, U UMass came to us probably a year or so ago and talked to us about the fact that what everyone, had con everyone knew or everyone considered to be a <coughs> UMass road, Eastman Lane, that there was actually a right-of-way for Eastman Lane that was owned by the county. And the funny thing was, was that the pavement for the road wasn't always in the right-of-way. So UMass had this paper right-of-way across their property, which was impinging on some of their abilities to do things because they couldn't really, you couldn't really put a parking lot in the right-of-way. So they asked the town to go to the county, which is what's required, uh, and ha asked the county to discontinue their layout, the county layout, to the town so that the town could then discontinue the layout to the UMass. And that's the process we're in right now. So the county discontinued the layout to the town. It's now a town layout. And I guess technically that means part of Eastman Lane is a town road now. Um, the parts that are not on in the layout that are on UMass property are UMass roads. So, uh, so to clean up the whole mix now, we're trying to discontinue the county layout back to UMass, and that's what this article would do. So the, the vote would be to discontinue the county layout back to UMass. And so you're saying that parts of the, it, that it's primarily UMass property anyway, with parts of the road actually now falling in town property because the... Because we own the county layout. Because we own the county layout. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hayden, I'm sorry, for Ms. Brewer. <laughs> Concerned that the master plan doesn't quite get as far as addressing um, its effects on the town. Um, and there's a great deal of emphasis on moving parking and traffic off of campus. And I can think of only one place it ends up when it's no longer on campus. Um, this road, while Eastman Lane is not slated or even there's not even a hint of its being discontinued as part of this plan, um, giving it up certainly allow that to happen, um, and that coupled with uh, the proposed parking structure for uh, Tilson Farms um, would be a disaster, and I think uh, we just need to, to keep our eyes on the ball, and uh, 
you should read this and understand it. Mr. Morgan, uh, do you want to respond to Mr. Hayden's concerns? Mr. Hayden and I have talked a lot about his concerns. Uh, as you said in the in the study, Eastman Lane is a vital part of the UMass master plan. Uh, UMass is talking about moving all of its facility support people to Tilson Farms, so they have the fire our fire department, they have their police department, and all their public utilities and all their facilities maintenance people will be at Tilson Farms. And the only way to get in and out of there easily is down Eastman Lane, and that's why there's no mention that they're going to close Eastman Lane. Um, in the master plan, there is discussion about closing and restricting flow on some of the roads on campus and some of the roads that are off campus, which is North Pleasant Street. Um, there is discussion about that as a long range thing. It's not an immediate change they want to do, it's a long range. So Mr. Hayden's correct is that there is a 50 year master plan the university is working on. People should look at it, people should take an eye, an eye at it and look and see how it impacts the town and make constructive comments and uh, constructive comments to UMass and say this is something the town thinks w should be done and as people and residents, this is what you think should be done. But um, there is really no plan in there to close Eastman Lane right at this point. So for the next 50 years, which is what that plan says, Eastman Lane will stay open. Thank you. Ms. Brewer. So just to spin that out a little longer with uh, hopefully not belaboring this to death, um, because this is a little different. I mean, usually these are very much whatever, you know, sure, we looked at it, we understand it, it's all fine. Um, but this is a little different. And so if we own it, if we own it versus they own it, what do you see the difference as being in the next, you know, they, they don't have, the, they have the option to use it, obviously, if it's theirs. You think they would want to use it if it's theirs. So am I understanding that we're talking about a leverage point versus um, an actual function of the road <coughs> because if we still own the road they're going to use it the same way they use it now we don't have to maintain it if it's not our road so we don't have to pave it we don't have to plow it it's their problem correct uh, the one thing to realize is because the road the actual pavement is not in the layout and crosses on the UMass property they could close it but they could close it. Because it's on UMass property. They could say, well, we're just going to close it and reroute it somewhere and disconnect it from the pavement that's in the layout. So th there, no one really has any leverage here. It's all, it all, it's all the way it is. Eastman Lane's always been considered a, a university road. It's been maintained by the university. They've upgraded the road. They've moved it as they needed to for the campus. But it's always been there, and it's always been a vital link on the campus between the east side and the central part of campus. So I, I, it's, there really is nothing that I think is going to change, and there's nothing in the master plan that says it's going to change. Um, Ms. So Bucanti and then Ms. Stein. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Brewer, have a follow-up. So, sure. so th then I think what I'm hearing is that really, actually, this is like all the other road discontinuances <coughs> we do, in that it, we're really not, we're not going to be doing anything different because of the funny way it's been laid out with that's that correct. paving on and off, et cetera. So we haven't been plowing it, we haven't been paving it, et cetera, so that, none of that's gonna change. Correct. Okay. Ms. Busanti. Yeah, just a couple uh, summary points. Uh, UMass has made very clear throughout their planning process so far, they have no intention of closing or discontinuing Eastman Lane. It is and rem will remain a very important connector road. Uh, the town discontinuing its uh, acceptance of portions of uh, Eastman Lane uh, ensures that, as has, as has been the case, that it will be the university and not the town that uh, expends funds to maintain and, you know, upgrade the road uh, as needed going forward and do the annual maintenance such as plowing. Um, the university uh, master plan and uh, some of their transportation planning uh, makes reference to North Pleasant Street, you know, ability, uh, desire to improve pedestrian uh, access, uh, safety, et cetera. Uh, the town, going back a couple of years now, has made very clear to the university that uh, we believe strongly that North Pleasant Street through the campus sh uh, should remain open to uh, through traffic. Uh, and we have all the leverage in the world on that one because that is a town road. Uh, and any 
any change in its status would require uh, town approval. And then I think the third point is really, I think where Mr. Hayden was, was focusing on was uh, we need to do some additional, have some additional dialogue with the university about the impacts of their, potential impacts of some of their transportation-related master planning about off-campus traffic. And so that's an ongoing ongoing discussion, whether it's Tillotson Farm or, or some of the other uh, some of the other changes they're contemplating. Thank you. Some of which could be covered by the um, by the uh, yes. town ground strategic planning yes. we're about to embark yep. on. I'm going to call Ms. Stein and then Mr. Hayden. Well, I was just going to say I can't imagine that they would want to close Eastman Lane given fire safety. Right. I, I think you know it's the fastest way to some of their dorms, um, and so to me. I, I can certainly support this without any concern. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. Yes, I'll just add two things to Ms. Stein's answers. Um, I'm happy to speak. Um, first of all, the uh, planning that's in here for North Pleasant Street is actually very fine. Um, it, it resembles in many ways the, uh, the, the work of the planning board and their, uh, yeah. and their, their form based approval in terms of what a mixed use street should look like. That's actually that's actually very it's very nice. Um, my concern, of course, is what's not in here, and as to whether or not they would, the university would ever want to close it. It's true they would it would really not be wise for them in any way to close it against fire trucks and their service vehicles. It is completely in keeping with the objects of this plan to close it for commuters and other kinds of regular traffic. And while that may not be if they would do that, it's something that we really need to be mindful of, um, in part because, in my mind, because we've made some mistakes in the past and sort of let things slip by, which have impacted our neighborhoods profoundly in a very negative way. And um, we've got to still keep our eye on the ball. Thank you. Um, could you be more specific about that part? I don't want to go on with this forever. It's 7.30 already. We've got two articles. But what do you mean when you talk about having um, been... Uh, you know, failing to, to pay close attention to things in the past. Are there university roads or properties that have that have changed for the for the worst from our perspective? The, um, the most um, uh, cogent example, I think, is um, involves the park uh, the, the creation of the southern parking lot. The parking lots that are most easily accessed by going up Lincoln Avenue. Um, when those parking lots were put in, I spoke to the people who were responsible. There was no requirement to assess traffic, the, the, how it would affect traffic. Um, it would have been a very simple question to ask, how is this going to affect Lincoln Avenue? Oh, that's interesting. Would you consider improving the intersections from, uh, from a, a major parking way and then move that to a, to a mixed use street? That would have been better. Um, and I think we all understand the impact of that. Um, That's only the closest intersection. There are other intersections that are further away which are similarly impacted. So it's not only Lincoln Avenue, but Lincoln Avenue and Amity Street, Lincoln Avenue and Northampton Road, um, University Drive and Northampton Road. Those are all things that are affected by that one decision. Um, similarly, um, the traffic on Sand Hill Road is all traffic that is displaced off of North Pleasant Street. Most commuters at one time when East Pleasant Street was not as Pleasant journey as it is now, go around North Pleasant Street. And that the, the need for that road was, was left to be useful for those things. Now the bridge is out, of course, that's going to bring the shift around again, let's say, to Houston Drive. Okay. I, I'm, I guess I'm not really sure about the, about the university's role in the decision making on some of that. It, it is along with the town's role and how some stuff could have been prevented. So, um, we cannot change history. Uh, I appreciate your your points very much, and I think that the point of of staying aware and engaged and and helping them be circumspect about their decision making is a good one. Um, but I I don't think I'm going to apply that by objecting to this. But okay. Yeah. yeah also, uh, for the, today, with all of this in mind, we do have a traffic study which is underway, which uh, will address some of these things, I believe, and then it will be feedback. You know, and they'll be filling some of the. 
because that's all good stuff. Okay. Anything more we want to talk about with this tonight? Or we'll be here all night long. Okay, Ms. Stein, would you like to make a motion? Sure. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 7, Street Discontinuance, Eastman Lane. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstaining. That is four in favor, one opposed, Abstained? zero abstaining. And one opposed. Okay. okay. Thank um, you. Ms. Stein. Uh, you need to assign, or we need to oh, decide who's speaking to Article 7 and 6 so we can go on filling out our Thank you very much. Um, so Olympia Drive, that's kind of in Ms. Brewer's bailiwick. Yeah, I guess okay. so. Okay. And uh, Eastman Lane, someone want to speak to Eastman Lane? I, I think I, Mr. Hayden should I, speak I, I, to it. <laughs> You're going to speak to it even though you opposed it? I don't know if we want to. Okay, so you're not going to confuse people with the, <laughs> the oh, speaking to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did, unless somebody sorry. wants to steal it. Ms. Brewer? Did, I, I don't want it, but <laughs> did you oppose it or abstain? I opposed it. That's what I thought you said the first time. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're all comfortable with him speaking to it anyway, right? Whatever. Okay. Nothing about it. Moving right along, Article 8, Southeast Street. So Article 8 is Southeast Street. This is actually a section of sidewalk that people have been talking about since before I've gotten, before I came to the town. Uh, we actually submitted this project as a community development block grant project. We don't know if we're actually going to do it, but we do need the easements to do anything out there. So before you, you have actually a set of plans and you actually have the actual takings we need to do. So um, what we need to do is be given permission to take these easements so we can build the sidewalk. And as always, if someone comes back to us and says, well, we'll give you the easement, but we need to be paid for it, we would come back for the authorization to pay for the takings. Thank you. So this is permission for the easements, um, for to negotiate for the, the easements, the basically, easements. to take them, and compensation would be a different issue in the future. And this is for sidewalks on Southeast Street. This is primarily connecting Colonial Village down to the... Down to um, Route 9. Which would be very valuable and terrific. Questions or comments, Mr. Reed? Just a comment as someone who, who often travels that stretch of road. Um, it would be a good thing to have a sidewalk there. Oh, yeah. Uh, commonly used thoroughfare for residents of Colonial Village to get to yeah. the services that go on in our parks. Definitely. All right. Ms. Stein, would you like to make the motion? Sure. I move that. Um, the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 8, acquisition of easements, Southeast Street, CDBG sidewalk project. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's and unanimous. Who's going to speak to it? I would like to speak to Southeast Street sidewalk project. Yeah, I guess I can do that. Okay, thank you. Article 9, Western Mass Electric easements, Boltwood Walk. So in front of the Douglas Funeral Homes, there's actually a transformer vault under the sidewalk. That vault has some serious issues. It actually shorts out from time to time. And when that vault shorts out, it actually causes Douglas Funeral Home, Super Bowl, and a few other places in that area to lose power. And it'll be the only place in town that has no power. Uh, lights at Kellogg loses power at two. Kellogg and North Pleasant, they lose their power. So the property owner has been talking to Wimco, and Wimco's agreed to actually take the transformers out of that vault and put it in what they call, uh, it's an underground feed still, but it's an above ground transformer. It's those little green boxes you see around town, mostly in the subdivisions. It's an uh, above ground transformer, but it's not on a pole. So to, in order to do that, they cannot put the transformer in the middle of the sidewalk where the vault is. So the transformer vault has to move onto the grass they're going to put it on Douglas Funeral Home property, but they may need to also cover part of the town property, which is the walkway, which goes from North Pleasant Street back to the parking garage. It's called Boltwood Walk, or is actually, when we were building it, we like to call it Starbucks Walk because the guys always got their coffee right there and they enjoyed the coffee's place. So there may be a need for the town to grant an easement to Wimco to place this vault and the above ground transformer on town property, and that's what this article will do. We'll give the town manager permission to grant that easement to Wimco when they decide where they're going to put this transformer. Okay. Questions or comments, Ms. Stein? Uh, how big is this vault compared to the existing one? 
I mean, it looks little on this, but I thought from the dimensions, it seemed kind of large. It's actually it could fit in between the, in, right in the middle here where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. The vault is about four feet in diameter. It's a round circle, and the above ground transformer is four foot by four foot by about two and a half feet tall. And I, is the existing vault that size? No, the existing vault is probably uh, eight foot wide okay. by 16 foot long and it's eight foot deep. Okay, so we're not going bigger. That's no, going That was my smaller. concern when I read this. I wasn't sure. Ms. Brewer. So just to place it in my mind, because I didn't go look before I did this, like you said, Starbucks walk. Um, currently, that's where the grates are. Yes. That, that are just this one unusual place that we have these grates. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and so who cares how big it is because it's underground. But when we put up the, when we put this new box out, obviously you've thought about this in terms of, you know, it, what's the side, the sidewalk access could be impacted. But I mean, it's not going to be narrowed so much that it's going to be, it's not going to turn it into an alleyway there. I mean, it's not going to turn it into an Antonio's alley. It's going to still be wide enough, you know, wheelchair access, stroller access, that sort of thing. It's not going to be on the sidewalk at all. It we we be. own a section of grass space beside the sidewalk. Be It'll still be on grass. Grass. Okay. So it won't come into what the current walkway is at all. It's just that technically we own part of the grass and they own part of the grass. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Mr. Hayden. <laughs> Maybe we could get some public art on it. Okay. Further discussion about this one. Ms. Stein. I move that the select board uh, recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 9, grant of electrical easements, Boltwood Walk. Second. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Mr. Hayden, it seems kind of engineering-y. I, I All right. Highly yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 10 and 11, back to the conversation we started with at 7 o'clock. Mr. Morin. So The only thing I'd like to add is in your packet, you have the plans for the layout for Atkins, and then you'll see they're color-coded. The yellow is actually the land we're giving, we're discontinuing. So just so you know, and if there's any other questions, I'll be happy to answer. Any other questions? This is all the Atkins, um, Atkins Corner acceptances and the conveyance of the discontinued so they're just related these are things yes. that are not rights of way that are necessary anymore so no further comment or question Ms. Stein article 10 I move that the select board recommend to the May 6 2013 annual town meeting article 10 accept altered layout layouts of rights of way Atkins Corner Second. further discussion all in favor say aye Aye. 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 That's unanimous. And we'll pair it with 11 and then we'll do the assignment. Want me to go ahead and. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 11, conveyance of discontinued rights of way, Atkins Corner. Second. For the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, who's speaking to those? Thank you. We're looking Thank you for you, the Anna. information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. You're that guy. I've lost track again yeah. of who's doing what, but I'll get it. Don't worry, we'll fill you in. Okay, so Article 19 now is capital, and we have Sandy Pooler here, finance director. Um, in our uh, town meeting packets, we have the uh, Joint Capital Planning Committee's report on all the capital items. So um, folks should have had the opportunity to review those. Um, have town meeting members received those yet? Does anybody know? First mailing, first yes. First mailing. Yeah, as of Sunday, they hadn't been received. Do you know when they, did they My get them Monday? My husband got it before yeah. Sunday. Yeah, you got yours in your packet. So I was just wondering if we knew of any town meeting members who don't live in our houses so who received them separately. So you're saying your husband, who is a town <laughs> meeting well, member, got his? Well, my husband's came in the mail, I thought. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. That Question well, unanswered. Sorry. Moving right along. Oh, it should be. <laughs> Mr. Pooler, thank you very much. So, uh, so I don't think we need to go into a great detail on this stuff. Um, 
uh, Ms. Stein and Mr. Wald have been giving us excellent updates on all of the capital stuff as we've gone along through the JCPC's process, and we do have all of the information uh, in our uh, in our select board packets. It, so this information is in the select board packet online as well as us having received it in our town meeting packet. So does anybody have any questions about Article 9? Or do you want to introduce this before we go kind of topic by topic? Are you good? Okay, okay good. We all know how this works. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So uh, equipment. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the equipment part of the capital recommendation? Very well. Ms. Stein. <laughs> I move that the select board recommend the May 6th 2013 annual town meeting article 19 capital program equipment in the amount of dollars that will be filled in <laughs> in the amount of dollars <laughs> i just realized just it's not in, not Whatever. in our motion sheet um and i would like to speak to it how's that as soon as Ms. is the amount Peter in the warrant or do we have a do we not have an amount for that yet uh, uh let's see i've got the warrant right here and uh it is, it is in the warrant yes, yes it is so then i can and it matches right nothing's changed um let's see no wait a minute this is 19 118,955 okay Second. further discussion all in favor say aye. 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 aye that's and as unanimous. I said, I would like to speak to that one. It's all yours. This I time. got it, right? Article you 20. Never <laughs> take your JCPC. Okay, here. now I, I can fill in the money. I just have to get organized here. Um, shall I go ahead and make the next one? And Certainly. All right, I move that the select board recommend to the May 6th, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 20, capital program, buildings and facilities in the amount of $464,500. Second. Further discussion? Questions on buildings and equipment, or buildings and facilities? And all in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. <laughs> Ms. Steiner, Mr. Wald. Um, I'm happy, or if Mr. Wald wants to do it, or? All right, I'll take that one too then. Perfect. 21, capital bond authorization. Well, that's not very complicated. Okay, so I make the motion. Sure. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6th, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 21, capital program bond authorizations in the amount of, and there are three amounts here, uh, 400,000 for pumper truck, 425,000 for purchasing two large trucks and a bucket truck for the public works department, and 400,000 re for replacing the boiler and making associated repairs at Wildwood. So there are three under the bond authorization. Second. Further discussion? Mr. Pooler, anything else we need to know about bond authorizing? I think it's a good time to borrow because interest rates are low. And you need a bunch of money to borrow at one time for it to be uh, monetarily sound. I'll be happy to speak to that. Oh, we have to vote first. <laughs> uh, all in favor? I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Hayden. Yep, we do. Okay. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Aye, that's unanimous. And Article 22. This was one that we actually had information on last time, but we didn't um, we didn't deal with it because it hadn't been on our agenda. But this is um, capital debt rescission. And um, so, if you didn't look back on your material from last time, this is um, debt that was authorized in 2007 for handicapped ramp and other alterations to be made to the East Street School, and those alterations did not happen. And that um, that debt. Uh, uh, the ability to borrow for that is no longer necessary, so it is considered good accounting housekeeping to clean up your your debt authorizations periodically. So we're looking to rescind that authorization. Is that about right? Exactly right. Excellent. Further questions about that? Ms. Stein. Um, I move that the select board recommend the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 22, <coughs> capital program debt rescission in the amount of $80,000. Further discussion, Ms. Brewer. 
I'm so sorry. I don't recall, and I'm not seeing it here in front of me, though it probably is. What are we going to do with the money? Nothing. Nothing. It's okay. not money. It's the ability it's to borrow. It's the ability to borrow. Exactly. So we, up a credit card. And yeah, exactly, because you can't apply it to something else. Right. Thank you. I knew it was there someplace. Thanks. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. One of our capital people. Mr. Wald, do you want this one? Mr. Wald, okay. Who was speaking for the previous Oh, yeah, bond authorization. Uh, whoever, Mr. Wald, do you want to do bond authorization also? Seems to go together well. Excellent, okay. So, so, um, Jim is doing the bond authorization? Yes, 21 and 22. Okay, so that's the end of capital. We're now at Community Preservation Act. And did we have anybody coming in for this, do we know? My understanding was we were expecting the chair. Yeah, maybe he didn't think we were going to move along off and so speaks fast. to the yeah. CPAC stuff. So. We could, sure, we could do other things and maybe they'll come in. That's Ms. Brewer, yeah. While we're thinking about that, um, just to let everyone know, I really appreciate that we have the assignment sheet in here. There is a mistake, however, on it, and so we'll go over that at agenda setting tomorrow or something. Okay. But it showed that we already did Article 19 and that I was going to speak to it, which mm -hmm. isn't true. Yeah. So, whatever. Okay. But okay. we're keeping this yeah. up for you, Stein. Good, It'll all please be good. do, because I, <laughs> It'll I all have be enough pieces yep. of paper. Fixed again. <laughs> It'll okay, all be fixed then, moving right along. So we'll skip over Article 24 right now in, uh, in hopes that someone comes in for that. And if they don't, then we'll decide what we'll do with it. So we'll do uh, Article 23, which is water and sewer debt. Yep. And this is for the, um, the borrowing that needs to happen for the sewer expansion stuff that we dealt with. No, this is for work on Pine Street. Oh, mm -hmm. so that's right. It's Pine to Street. replace the um, water and sewer pipes on Pine Street uh, from Henry to um, North Pleasant. North Pleasant, thank you. <laughs> Even better. That's right. When we talk about water and sewer debt authorization, that's just uh, water and sewer debt. I just go into the sewer expansion mode, but no, this is sewer maintenance and replacement mode, uh, water and sewer on Pine Street, which will be just a magnificent improvement, the beginnings of road improvement. Uh, questions or comments about that? I, I'm having a this problem time. that yep. I have to share with you all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but if I'm going to make these motions, it better be clear to me. I've got Article 22 is water and sewer debt, but when I look on the warrant, Article 22 is debt rescission. So, so we just did so debt that's, rescission, uh, which right. we just did. So this is twenty-three, yeah. and correct. the motion sheet is wrong. Correct? The motion sheet is wrong. The warrant yes. is right. The agenda is right. Yep, it's Article twenty-three. Okay. And there are two Good. parts. And, a and there are B. two and parts. Both so one's A and one's B. Yep. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 23A, water and sewer debt, part, well, sorry, take out the A that I said, 23, water and sewer debt, part A, in the amount of $1 million. Second. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Who's going to speak to it? Um, let's do part B first. Okay. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 23 Water and Sewer Debt Part B in the amount of $1 million. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Mr. Hayden, this is looking sort of engineering y also. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Debt for engineering, you know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, next up, FY13 budget amendments, which is Article 12. And we've got information memo. in our packets. Yep, memo here. Uh, Mr. Pooler, tell us anything you want us to know. So we've just got a couple of budget amendments here. What do you want us to know about this? We've got uh, the memo. So um, I think the most important thing about the first one is when you see the motion on A, it will be for a lesser amount that's in, than is yeah, in the right. uh, warrant. 
um, as we kept reviewing some of these accounts, um, the comptroller pointed out that um, of this 43,000 that was sort of excess in our debt service account, uh, and just by the way, the reason it is in excess is because when we sold our debt, uh, we had savings and there was some money in there that was already appropriated in case we wanted to issue uh, bond anticipation notes and we didn't issue those. And, and so we had some excess money. Um, some of that money was money that the school department was reimbursing the town for some of the debt on um, one of the school projects for the uh, South, South Campus. South Campus. Yeah. It's a split project, sort of, that we agreed with the school department that we would do some of it and they would pay for mm -hmm. some of it. And um, so then when Sonia looked at the specifics of it, she said, well, that kind of reimbursement is not really there to reappropriate to something else because it then screws up all our other reporting. So we took that out. So it means that there'll be $35,910 when you see the motion on, on A. Mm -hmm. um, and since that's a lesser amount, that will be within the scope. Um, and so that money is being transferred into community services to cover um, what we know right now is um, looking at a deficit in the veteran services account. Um, would be better to that now, it's always a tricky account to figure because people come and go from the rolls between now and the end of June, and we don't know what the exact deficit is, but we know there's going to be something, and we know we have this excess in debt service, so that's what A is all about. Um, and then B and C are about moving money into uh, the OPEB fund. Uh, B is as a result of the health insurance holiday where we're not taking deductions from employees or matching that with town um, employer contributions into the health insurance trust fund and instead taking that money and moving it into the OPEB fund. C is about taking the reimbursement that we get from the federal government for our Medicare D benefits that we provide to retirees for drug coverage. Um, we get reimbursed from the federal government every year as sort of an incentive to make sure that employers continue to offer that benefit. We've traditionally put that money into the health insurance trust fund, um, but uh, now that we have an OPEB fund, we think it should go into the OPEB fund. Um, D is an insurance recovery. When there was a leak in the roof here, or I think actually some equipment up there that Closet. ruined that two weeks. Um, we have insurance recovery that's more than $20,000 has to be appropriated by town meeting. You can't just take the money and, and pay off your claims. So that's why we need town meeting action on that. Uh, the total cost of that is actually more than $20,000. It's about $29,000. So at some point, we're figuring we're going to have to go to the finance committee to get a transfer out of uh, the reserve fund for the some portion of the remainder, depending on how much money is left in the IT's department's budget at the end of the year, because they went and spent the money to have that nice new TV there. Um, and finally is the um, overlay deficit. Every year we set aside money for um, overlay, as you all know, to pay abatements. Um, and, it, and each year's overlay is a separate account the 2009 account is in deficit because, um, basically because of a case called the Verizon case for the taxing of wires and poles. Um, there was a case that um, the city of Newton and Boston brought all, um, was appealed to the appellate tax board and said that <coughs> citizen towns had jumped the gun by starting to tax those things. She said, we do tax them now going forward, but from 2009 going back, <laughs> hundreds of communities tried to tax, including Amherst. Um, that case was lost in court, and so we had to pay Verizon an abatement on their taxes, uh, more than uh, had been anticipated. And so that will be funded from a declaration that will happen tomorrow night by the assessors uh, of overlay surplus, from surplus from other all other years we have surplus is built up in other years and we will use some portion of that to put F 2009 in balance we're required every year by the Department of Revenue to have these 
accounts in balance. If we didn't do it now, we'd have to do it on the recap sheet and, and put it on the tax rolls next year. So it's we just want to get it cleaned up now. Ms. Stein. I'm curious about the overlay account. Um, each year we put a certain amount into it. Um, but this is the first time I can remember us actually having to use it. Am I wrong? Um, and how much money are we, we talking about? We always use some of it. We did. But um, usually there's enough to cover it. To cover this because the Verizon case was a very big case. Okay. There wasn't enough. Okay. So, but we'll be all right from the other years where we had the excess to pay it off and still be okay in the future. That's exactly right. Okay. And periodically, the uh, the excess and the overlay account um, accrues to the free cash. Well, yeah. Once the assessors declare that they are done with this money and it's safe to let it go, they they declare what's called overlay surplus, and then uh, at the end of the year, that becomes free cash. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. How much money do we overrise and all together? I don't need to know that the second, but I think it. I think to give people an idea of the scope of what that, what we fought for in the legislature to get this to happen. Now we have to give some of it back for that certain time period, but that it it it's money move. It's real money moving forward that we do get to keep. So it would probably so because this balance, this forty one eight one four, is to cover what couldn't be covered in the overlay account already, but it doesn't tell us what the total is that be for the actual Verizon problem. I will find out the answer to that. Uh, it's just sometime before town meeting. Yeah, um, but I will tell you it's probably about in that range from what I remember, but I will get you a precise figure. In other words, it's, it's about in this forty to $50,000 range. It is roughly all that the Verizon problem is costing us, but that's just 41000 we don't normally have in that account. Okay. But that would be good, again, just to have the yeah. scope over how many years that it covered. Other questions or comments? Um, just in case anyone is really paying rapt attention at home, um, just so nobody gets the idea that it's a $29,000 television. It's not. <laughs> and the memo <laughs> makes clear that there was, a, there was a great deal of electronics equipment that's all housed in that closet and behind those walls there that were uh, very damaged by the roof leak. So the television was the most obvious part, but everything else is it, like it wrecked, a, it wrecked a new sound system that we got that is used for meetings that, um, that don't that aren't broadcast on ACTV, so it's got uh, great microphones and an amplifier for, for stuff and all kinds of other things in that, that closet that I never go into, but uh, it's the closet that runs the room. <laughs> so, okay, uh, for the discussion on any of these. Ms. Stein, would you like to make this motion? Yeah. <laughs> I forget exactly where I am. Um, I'm going through 12 parts. Um, so you start at the bottom of page two. Okay, got it. Thank you. And I was marking things, so I got lost. Sorry. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 12, FY 13, budget amendments, Part A, in the amount of 35910 are we going to do it parts A, B separately, or do you want to meet her? I uh, guess this is, is this going to be separate motions under the article, or is it looks it like be it all? is. So I think maybe we should just vote that one first. Second. Okay. Uh, further discussion, Ms. Brewer. Alyssa, Alyssa is just going to volunteer to take all these because they're finance committee articles, and she's just going to say uh huh, except for maybe the Verizon comments. So just okay. a thought. <laughs> so Alyssa is going to do this, and let's vote. All right but a bunch of these. A further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's I unanimous. move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 12, FY 13 budget amendments, Part B, in the amount of $376,253. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 12, FY 13 budget amendments, Part C, in the amount of $78,270. Second. For discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. 
I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 12, FY13, budget amendment, Part D, in the amount of $20,071. For the discussion, all in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay, just one more, I guess. Or did, no. Yeah. I move that the select board recommend the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 12, FY13 budget amendments, Part E, in the amount of $41,814. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Quick question. Mr. Eden. Yeah, it's up to the moderator. He's taking comment on that. So if you're interested in yeah. suggesting that to him. Which is what, but then people would take it off the consent calendar. So. Right, because you can't have questions and answers on something that is on the consent calendar, so. So either people would support it and and um, and accept right that they're that you weren't going to do questions and answers on that, or five people would say we're discussing it, pull it off. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Raptor, uh, now we have <laughs> Article 16, the town operating budget. This is the town portion and the enterprise funds, as far as we get. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, town, uh, no, school and library budgets will be considered next week. Um, we have been having ongoing discussion uh, or ongoing opportunity for discussion of the town manager's budget uh, for since January, uh, as well as before that, as far as our guidelines, et cetera. We have had a number of questions submitted and answered. Um, if anybody is not Certainly, we can continue to ask que questions now, but if anybody is concerned that they have further questions that don't allow them to vote for any of these, e either that they want the, our vote deferred or they, uh, they want to abstain or object or whatever, that's all fine. So um, procedurally, if you have any issues with this as we go on, just let me know. Otherwise, we shall start with uh, Article 16 and the operating budget. The operating budget is divided into many different motions. Or different uh, budget categories and different motions. Um, Mr. Pooler, do you know if the Finance Committee has determined the order that they're going to go for the uh, different budget areas yet for their motions? No, have they haven't, yeah. Very good. <laughs> so they will determine that. So how that proceeds at town meeting will be up to them. <laughs> okay, so then um, what do we start with? The first part is debt service. And debt service is in the amount of one million nine hundred fifty-nine thousand six hundred and three dollars, Mr. Musanti. Yeah, just um, the dollar amounts that are recommended in the various motions for the operating budget are the identical to the budget proposal that I recommended back in January, with two exceptions: uh, debt service being one of them, because of the bond sale uh, in early March and our which included uh, you know, a very competitively low interest rate and savings resulting from refinancing a piece of our old debt. Uh, the dollar amount is slightly lower by about $2,000. And then the other spot is in the, uh, uh, other spots are in the uh, general government and um, conservation and development budgets. They include the uh, staffing related costs to the rental regulations bylaw that assumes a January 1 uh, implementation date. So the conservation and development budget for an inspector and a permanent administrator position and uh, their associated employee benefits that are budgeted in general government are, those dollar amounts are slightly higher as a result. Okay. All right. So, um, so starting with debt service and knowing that this is all the same as the budget book that we have been pondering uh, low these many weeks and months, any questions about the debt service recommendation? All right, Ms. Dime, would you like to make the motion? 
I move that the select board recommends the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting article 16 FY14 operating budget debt service in the amount of, it's gonna be somewhat different, but $1,959,603. Further discussion. So Mr. Musanto, you're saying the number is different than that? No, that's that, the, that that's the okay. revised okay. lower number. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's different from the book. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Um, who would like to handle the operating budget articles this year? Like Ms. Brewer was saying before, the um, these are finance committee ones. They speak to everything <laughs> that's complicated, and you just say, yes, what they said. <laughs> um, and also, if, if select board has it, it throughout any of its budget process raised other points that we thought were worth um, referencing that finance committee didn't mention then of course we have the opportunity to say it as part of that statement as well so were you volunteering no. mr hayden thank you very much okay um next up we have where am i uh, conservation. conservation and development so again you said this is a different number this is a number that's one million ten thousand eight hundred forty eight dollars and that is the corrected number yes Okay, questions or comments about the conservation and development budget? Um, Mr. Hayden. Just one, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I was looking at the, um, the report that we get on uh, enforcement actions by this department that we got it yesterday or this evening. Right. Um, and I just I noticed how many more items there are on it than have ever been before, and that's supported by this number. Through the Safe and Healthy Neighborhood Working Group process, I learned uh, I, just a tremendous amount about what that department is doing. It's just there's a there's a huge shift in um, priority and and uh, work direction in that department now, and uh, the the complaints are being very seriously uh, tracked proactively and reactively, uh, and, uh, and they're doing great work. All of those reports, uh, end up in the select board packets. They also are on the safe and healthy neighborhoods, um, web page and folks should check those out. So those are um, reports from the code enforcement officials from inspections as well as health. So, and at some point that will be more automated. It's going to be part of Munis or something like that. So they aren't going to be kind of like PDFs of weird spreadsheets, but. Better than nothing, and, and really wonderful to be putting out there to the community what exactly is going on there and the status of these things. So. And how they're being resolved. Right, thank you. All right, other questions or comments about conservation and development? And Ms. Stein. I move that the select board recommend the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting article 16 FY14 operating budget conservation and development in the amount of $1,010,848. For the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. So, Mr. Hayden, I don't know if you were intending to volunteer for all of them, but that's typically how we do the operating budget: is one person takes. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, if yes. you want to take back your volunteering, that's okay. Okay, so we will stop asking and just know that Mr. Hayden will will do all the operating budget. Yes, thank you. Okay, next up, then the community services budget in the amount of one million seven hundred eight thousand two hundred thirty eight dollars. And this was the other one you said that has the, this is the corrected amount. Yes. That's changed slightly. Questions or comments about this budget? Hi, Ms. Stein. I move that the select board recommend the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, article 16, FY14 operating budget, community services in the amount of $1,708,238. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Next up, public safety in the amount of nine million ninety-nine thousand dollars, ninety-nine thousand twenty-five dollars. And Ms. Stein, would you like to make the motion? I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 16, FY14 operating budget, public safety in the amount of $9,099,025. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And uh, I'll just note, um, because it does sort of feel like we're going through these quickly, 
um, so a point that we make periodically, but it's always worth repeating, is that not only have we had this budget for a while, but this is actually just the same budget that we've been working with for many years. We went through through several years of cutting, 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 and now in the last couple of years, we've been lucky to just be maintaining. So there aren't significant differences um, in these budgets, and uh, and so we uh, we're very comfortable with them and uh, know them pretty well. Okay, next up, I move. Works. Shall I? Yes, <laughs> Shall I move? I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 16, FY 14 operating budget, public works in the amount of $2,020,127. Second. Further discussion, questions or comments on the public works budget? Um, this is not directly related to this, but a conversation we were having earlier, oh, about capital, um, and the memo, uh, the JCPC report noted, which I thought was a good one, that um, that we're not actually making a, uh, an article, uh, we don't have an article on Chapter 90 this year, because where we have traditionally had a Chapter 90, which is the road money article on the warrant, we learned that we don't have to do that, that's, that's grant funding that does not need to be uh, appropriated, so that's not there, which is not part of the public works budget, but it did remind me that I had wanted to mention that earlier. Okay, anything else about public works? And all in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 16 FY14 operating budget general government in the amount of $6,400,243. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 16 FY14 operating budget water fund in the amount of $3,813,478. Second. Further discussion about the water fund? All in favor say aye. 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 Aye, that is unanimous. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 16 FY14 operating budget sewer fund in the amount of $3,767,404. Second. Further discussion, sewer fund. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye that's unanimous. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 16 FY14 operating budget solid waste fund in the amount of $535,895. Second. Further discussion. Solid waste is all in the news these days. Um, so do you have anything uh, interesting to tell us about solid waste fund anything that's changed since the town manager's budget recommendation this is the fund that has that is in danger of a shortfall in the future and we have solid waste management issues in sort of the short term um, anything we should know something needs to change I don't know <laughs> what it's going to be um, landfills are closing and there um, so um, but there's nothing that has changed with those stories you've read in the paper that's affecting the operations of the fund this year. It's on target to be in balance, um, partly because we've cut back our expenses as much as we can. Um, and, um, but, so outside of the budget process, there's a whole discussion about what to do about whether to maintain a transfer station or close it down or treat our trash and recycling differently than we do. Um, but there's none of that included in the budget recommendation. And is there any sort of a timeline expectation for when uh, when that will be an issue? Is it potentially a mid-year change, something we deal with at fall town meeting or a budget adjustment next spring, or are we looking further out? Uh, well, uh, there are some fundamental operational decisions that have to be made that go beyond budget issues as to whether the town wants to stay in the business of having a transfer station. Um, that's going on in the... Uh, Refuse and Recycling Committee discussions now, and my understanding is that they do not have a consensus yet as to what direction to, to head in on that. Um, we, uh, so I think we sort of limp along with the Solid Waste Fund. Um, I don't anticipate we have, we'll get through this year, we may even get through next year, mm -hmm. we may even get through the year after that, but the day of reckoning is coming. 
Um, and um, so again, I think what you'll see next are some recommendations about different ways to, to handle refuse and recycling before you see a different budget. Okay, thank you. Ms. Brewer. So I'm thinking timing-wise, we're looking at town manager goals for FY15 in terms of present, starting to report out on what my, I mean, when we have that conversation about FY15, um, to yeah. start to report out on what the process might be. I mean, it isn't now. Yeah, that's I think that's, I can that envision would be a way of doing that. with staff and with the Recycling Refuse Management Committee coming to the select board with some preliminary recommendations and getting feedback from you and the community. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Further discussion on solid waste? On in. All in favor, say aye. 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 I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting article 16 FY14 operating budget transportation in the amount of $907,599. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Okay, mm -hmm. that is the vast majority of the operating budget, short only the schools and libraries. Um, how do folks feel about dealing with the CPA recommendations tonight? We do have the whole CPAC report. Um, again, this is something Ms. Stein has kept us very informed of throughout the CPA process. And more than that, I don't know when we're going to have another 20 minutes or half an hour to give them to come in and present this to us at our upcoming meetings. So uh, do people feel comfortable with the CPA recommendations or um, how would you like to proceed? Uh, let me see what the warrant looks like on this so that it's clear. CPA here. That's Article 24. Just want to see how it sit up. I wasn't prepared to speak to this, so I'm trying to equate the motion sheets. I see this. Um, part B is 156,000. I know what that's for, but the numbers seem different or more spread out than the uh, over the Brunel property, and that's something I don't really know. I'd be happier, I think, if they presented this. Um, it's it's really not that complicated for them so um so i'm not sure we have the option of that so it's more of a question and i don't expect you to present the whole thing but it's a question of does will the select board have questions that we can't answer such that our recommendation should be deferred if if we're satisfied with the recommendation from the community preservation act committee as is and or we could we could get our questions about any of this answered to our satisfaction, then we can deal with it tonight. Um, I mean, I, if not, I we can do it. it. I just would feel better not being in charge of something I'm only a liaison to, but I can do it. We, we can pretend Mr. Pooler's in charge if it makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Want to be in charge, Sandy? You haven't even been to the meetings. No, well, I, I can pretend. But Sonia reports. <laughs> uh, so, so, again, the, all right, I, 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 will, I will do it. Um, I will do it. I will make, uh, I will move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 24, Commit Community Preservation Act Part A in the amount of $282,395. And what you can see here um, we need on a the second warrant. First. <laughs> second. Mr. Hayden second. seconded. Thank you. Oh, sorry about that. Is that, um, that there's fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Um, this is money that they have in hand. Okay, um, yep. so it's not money that they're borrowing for. All right, fifteen thousand is for this um, 
um, helping the people in Echo Village um, with um, uh, rental deposits and that sort of thing if they have to move because in their Eagle Crest property apartment, that was not a requirement pre previously. Okay, then the historic preservation, uh, you see $195,395. That includes the conservation of Emily's dress and storage equipment for the Historical Society, Amherst Media historic recordings um, uh, being preserved, um, the Unitarian uh, Church uh, having their Tiffany window restored for 106000 and the Jones Library uh, roof repair, uh, 14000 um, And then open space from this is $10,000 for serv surveys and appraisals because we're actually borrowing money for open space. The recreation uh, is $60,000 uh, for the Mill River um, uh, recreation area. There's a leak that needs fixing. They want a shade structure and um, um, some lifeguard chairs because the old ones are splintered. CPAC administrative expenses, that's a standard $2,000 that um, uh, we really need to pay for um, CPAC keeping us informed, etc. <clears throat> okay, so that's the first part. Thank you, that's much more detail than we expected you to go into. Um, that's the easy part. <laughs> the easy part. <laughs> the questions and comments about this, Ms. Brewer. So the idea is that under the <clears throat> first item, the 15,000, mm -hmm. that Family Outreach and Amherst Housing Authority would work together to administer that program. Right, and they're actually hoping to use that 15,000 to leverage more, more because 15,000 is not gonna take them very okay. far. So based on their <clears throat> other work, they might be able to combine that, right. like that 15 right. with the, their other sources, okay. Right. And uh, this is the same story of um, more being requested than could be um, given for, for the whole of Part A also, right? There are, right. There are unfunded requests that came into CPA. So after going right. through the whole process of weighing everything, these are the recommendations. And, uh, and CPA has a, has a very thorough and robust public process on all of these considerations. So uh, plenty of information was available uh, at those meetings and on the websites. Mr. Wald. Yeah, I mean, again, the, the, the reason we can do it is in part because certain things fell out and the Ann Whalen can be uh, bonded and things like that. Uh, but in fact, they actually have leveraged some money because there was uh, funds there were funds that were raised in the Love Notes benefit concert from the Amherst Club that, for example, go to these organizations and will help to pay some of those rent uh, differentials also. Great. So that's, Thank again, the, the process is working very nicely in this case. Great. Further discussion? And all in favor, say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Um, Ms. Stein, you want to speak to the CPA stuff? So again, th this isn't going to, you're not going to need to present this. The CPA uh, will be presenting it. You're just going to say... Yes. That's like board supported it. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Then <clears throat> I move to rec I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 24 Community Preservation Act Part B in the amount of 156,000. And what's written out here in great length, I haven't had time to absorb. Um, it's basically to purchase outright the Brunel property um, that uh, we were at one time hoping for a grant. Um, but in order to get this property and secure it, we really need to buy it at this point. So this is going to be borrowing under CPA. So this again, this is on the um, town's open space and uh, recreation plans that's long been identified as an area of interest for the town. Um, right. We already did vote to oh, support to acquire it through the grant. I, I think I'm wrong. I think this one we're going to pay for out of CPA, right? Okay, there, there is borrowing coming, but I jumped the gun there. Okay. This one is Not to borrowing. pay for out of CPA. Sorry, it's we're fine. rescinding the borrowing. Um, <laughs> I said it was complicated. Okay, so, um, but again, so this, the, the acquisition of this property has been supported by us and by town meeting before. Um, right. It's just a different funding source. So, um, okay, further okay. discussion on the Brunel Park. 
and property part B. I'm not sure Mr. Hayden actually seconded this motion. Did you second this? Did you second it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and all in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right, I'll speak to that. Um, then the third one, okay, let me just write this down so I know where I'm at. Okay, I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting article 24 community preservation act part C in the amount of 125,000. I think this is borrowed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Good. Um, I want to say, on. after you make the motion, we need a second. second. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I think the address is supposed to be 650 and not 650 to 652. Um, do you remember about that? There was some. 650, the right. Court so the 652, I think, doesn't really belong there. Um, that's on the warrant. It's on the I warrant. know. That's what I'm telling you. Well, it's less than the warrant. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not okay. More than. It's uh, less for than. purposes right. of tonight, uh, all right. we're this okay. We, we'll we'll make motion. sure that's correct for when okay. we do the motion. Good. Um, yeah. And basically, as you recall, this is for the purchase of um, the Rock Farm um, South Amherst property. Um, and they've put together a package, and uh, 125000 still needed to be borrowed. Mr. Wall. I maybe just could elaborate a little bit. This is uh, Rock Farm is a new name that, that people are not familiar with perhaps, but it was also the Nielsen property or Strawberry Fields. It was a subject of planned housing going back many more years than I've been involved in town politics. And there was a long time among some residents of the area an attempt to buy that or preserve it. And so part of what's going on here because of the large size of the package is that, if I'm, Ms. Stein can correct me if I'm wrong, we, the Castro Trust is involved to try to help leverage funds they're going to sell off two house lots to fund part of it, uh, and then we have the $125,000 here. And right. so this package between the sale of the lots, the town money, and private donations is supposed to bring the total up. Uh, the Castro and Trust is actually contributing $100,000 to maintain the scenic views from the rail trail. Right. And what's interesting is that it turns out the state, DCR, uh, is in favor of this because they were worried about the possibility of degradation of the landscape if the area is more developed and they think it's ac I think if I recall correctly from the CPA meeting they thought it was cheaper to pay a hundred thousand dollars to buy this outright than to have to deal with the annual maintenance if if the area becomes built up so so that was an interesting twist and that I think also brought the conservation uh, staff on uh, on board it was because this was, this was not a long-term priority unlike the Brunel property right I would just add there'll also be a, the article also um, uh, creates a conservation uh, restriction. Restriction, indeed it does. Ms. Brewer. So j just a couple of things that I'm not sure how I can string together effectively, but I'll try. Um, building on what Mr. Wald said, so although it says in the CPA report that it's a high priority for preservation, I don't think that's a fact associated with our open space and recreation plan. I think that might be someone's high priority, but I think it's an unfortunate choice of words for CPA to have said that because that's what I consider to be our priority, is what's in our open space and recreation plan as a high priority. This was not particularly, but that doesn't mean that opportunities don't arise the, where perfect things come together in gel, but it, it's not that it's been high on our particular list. Um, I have expressed reservations before because of the argument that was made against the housing units there, some of which would have potentially been affordable, which is been disappointing to see the changeover. However, seeing that two house lots would be made available there means that's two more houses, although they certainly won't be affordable, um, that will be contributing to our tax base in their own way. So that's something. And I want to also just assure myself that the 125, that is, that is just the final piece of this puzzle, I believe you've indicated. And it's not that this is early stages and it might change. It's that this is our portion. It, this this is it. This is one twenty five. Okay, Ms. Stein. Um, I will say, in defense of CPA, saying this is a high priority item, the public came out in large numbers in support of acquiring this property. Um, they really felt between Bernal Pools and the 
um, proximity to conservation areas, et cetera, et cetera, that this really was worth preserving, that the views, et cetera, would be marred by a 17 house development property. And so the turnout supporting it was surprisingly large. Mr. Hayden. That was their consultant's That very same DCR, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm not personally gonna support this article. I, I have a lot of issues with its history. Um, I, don't know, I don't know where that brings me for its present. Um, I'm willing to let town meeting make a community-wide decision about whether or not this is its priority. Um, I'm going to abstain from the recommendation. If it comes to a tally vote, then I'll personally vote against it, but I won't, I won't vote against, I, I won't make a, an opposing vote for a select board recommendation because I'm happy for the community to decide its own priorities. Anyone else, any comments before we go? Um, <laughs> everyone go has ahead. a comment. Yeah, no, I have no comment. <laughs> Mr. Waltz. I, mean, I was just wondering though, there is a motion on the, on the floor whether it would make sense for us to take no position on the article. Um, that you make no recommendation. Right. So I, since there is a motion on the floor, people can make their vote. I don't know, how would people like to proceed with that? We can do whatever we want. We can proceed with the motion as is. We could discuss whether or not we should um, vote to make no recommendation. Um, so procedurally on that before we get to what other, anybody else's reaction to, to what I said or how they might vote. So procedurally, Ms. Stein. Well, I just feel having watched the whole process, the, the local support for it, um, the arguments that were made at the time that I will vote to support this. So, so um, you'd rather the select board take a recommendation? I, I would rather. recommendation and you'll support it. Okay, Mr. Heaton. Uh, we're required to take a position on this, one way or the other, and I think we'd be nowhere. <laughs> one way or the other, or not. <laughs> um, Mr. Walden and Ms. Burke. So procedurally, if one wanted to achieve that outcome, one would have to defeat a motion in favor of the current? Uh, you know, we're a small body. We could decide that <laughs> 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 the tide is going so against the motion <laughs> on the floor, and we'll just have a new motion. Ms. Brewer. Uh, <laughs> um, I pass. <laughs> Okay, um, so I think taking no position is in line with the vote that I, the meaning behind the vote that I would be looking to take, so I'd be happy for select board to take no position. Um, I don't think that town meeting really needs us to take a position or not. I mean, this is clearly gonna be, this is just gonna be one of those things they're, <laughs> they're gonna vote for. Um, so, so to defer to no position, I think would be a fine thing for us to do, so. Um, I am inclined to side with the gentleman on the board and, uh, and going with um, essentially vacating our earlier motion and going with a no, take, not, not taking a recommendation motion instead. Ms. Brewer. If I may have my turn back again, which you so <laughs> kindly just gave me back. Um, I, I'm trying to think of, you know, what's the select board's role in this? So to step back from it, because I think a bunch of us have been involved somewhat in the history of this process and may have our various reasons for our concerns. Um, and so the select board's role on CPAC, I mean, we, we make recommendations to town meeting on everything because you know, we're supposed to be able to see the big picture. And I think we have some concerns with the big picture at the same time as we have support for the CPAC process and how the process actually works. So I think it actually makes more sense for us to take no position than to have some sort of divided vote or uh, you know a, a no vote. I'm not even sure I'd like it to be a no vote at this point. I'd like it to be a select board is not really completely all together on what we see as this item fitting into the big picture of the town. So whereas the other things seem quite simple. Okay, so since there really is no way to defeat the original motion, it doesn't really get defeated. It's, it's, a, it's a motion to recommend or not. So you could have one person recommending and I suppose you could have four people abstaining, which would be the only way to 
to defeat it. Um, do you mind um, essentially withdrawing your motion and just moving on to a new motion? No, I think I'd rather I had one vote for and four abstentions. Okay, we could do that. So that will still uh, register, yeah. and then we can then we can make a new or, motion or to not I, recommend you know, whatever anybody. And that decides. would be basically the. But I, I would sort of feel having sat okay. through all of the meetings on this and felt the urgency and the the feelings of the people who really supported this, um, and watched you know the process over the years too. I'm not sure that. Uh, I would have wanted a different outcome than the outcome that we're going to get. So I would still support it. Okay. So Ms. Stein would like to go on record supporting this, and she did make the motion. So I would recommend that we proceed with her motion, um, that, that the best vote for to build up for the next motion that will come will be um, will be abstentions by anyone who wants it to not take a position. We'll then have another motion. So then we'll say basically the select board had, had two votes on this. One was one in favor of recommending and four abstentions and one that was presumably four um, votes in favor of no recommendation and I think that town meeting can deal with that. Ms. Brewer? I, I'm going to show my full level of ignorance at this point since we don't do exactly Robert's rules but if one, there one there's one vote for it and zero votes against it, doesn't it pass? You don't have to have a quorum to to have a vote right. Well, that's why I'm saying it's so it, I'm saying I'm not saying I'm not. Well, I'm I believe that if we voted one zero four, it would pass as a recommendation so to town meeting against rather than exactly. taking no position. Okay, that's putting a finer point on it. So this is this is why I was saying if you want to withdraw the motion, so we're actually going to end up with a motion to not recommend this based on proceeding with your motion it's going to be one in favor and four opposed and what's the alternate the alternate is to withdraw that motion to have a motion to not recommend or to take no position which could then be four in favor of taking no position and one opposed because it was a supporting motion I think I think you would rather go into this. I understand that you want to go on on record supporting this, right. but what will happen is your support vote will be overwhelmed by okay. our objection vote, right. and I don't think we want I, the select board. I withdraw board. my original motion, um, and will vote against yours. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> yes. fine. That's I fine. That's so just <laughs> just so you understand, we're um, yeah, I do. We 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 absolutely could go the way uh, with your original motion, but then it will look like a stronger opposition vote from the select board than any of us want to give we is. don't so want to all vote against okay. it we want to take no recommendation so someone else okay. made the motion yeah so mr walt i move that the select board do i have to read off the motion sheet or just to just ad lib you can ad lib <laughs> <laughs> i move that the select board take no position on this article second further discussion <laughs> all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed that, that would be me. <laughs> abstaining. <laughs> zero. No, so I was that's looking ahead to the next one. Four in favor, one opposed, zero abstentions for taking no position on this section of the article. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, right now along. we come to the last part, part D. Oh, we still have C. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Of course we don't. Of course we don't. Okay. I was looking at the wrong line. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 Annual Town Meeting Article 24 Community Preservation Act Part D in the amount of 110,000. Second. Uh, <laughs> thank you. All right. Further now, discussion. So this is the borrowing article, Mr. Hayden. Thank you. This is the Am Whalen Apartments kitchen and um, re kitchen repairs and electric, um, I don't know the appropriate. It's on page three of the CPA report. Yeah. Okay, there you go, that's what it is. Um, and I uh, would like to this time, yeah. speak to it or oh, against certainly. it. Or <laughs> I'm not gonna vote for this. I'm going to abstain and I should report that CPA CPAC was divided. 
on this, there were two people who voted against <clears throat> it. And it concerns it concerns the verbiage in the CPA, CPA Act, the Community Preservation Act. Um, and I don't want to go into it now. Um, I think we have had two letters from the lawyers, and I think the second one is not convincing to me, and I'd like to research it further. So at this point, I am not going to vote for it, and I'm not going to vote against it. And just so you know why. So, so bottom line, this boils down to um, some CPA members think that this is not legitimate, uh, a legitimate use of CPA funds. Um, town council has been consulted, and the CPA has been an evolving act um, through the years. And in fact, they just broadened it. Um, was that a year or two ago? Time flies. Um, so, all the advice from town council is that this is um, this is well in the in the realm of what is allowable under the act. So I understand you still doubt that, but our advice from town council is that it is sound. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just a little bit more elaboration. So Ms. Brewer and then Ms. Stein. I um, am, am familiar with this article only from, from the exposure to it associated with um, housing mm -hmm. issues. And <coughs> this is of course only half the money. The other half of the money is supposed to be coming from the block grant. and. So that just goes to show you that it's a large need and we don't have any place else to put it at this point, which tends to make me err on the go ahead and trust town council even though we've had some differences of opinion in the past. And obviously the CPA, as you say, is an evolving thing. Um, I, it's hard for me to understand how we could be so opposed to what town council's interpretation of this is. I would like at some point if we could get a copy of the CP of council's um, sure. indication on this that <coughs> obviously Ms. Stein still has concerns about just so that I could see if I shared them. Right. But um, you know, normally their assurance that yes, based on our understanding of the evolving nature of CPA, this would be an allowable expense it's hard for me to imagine they'd want to put us on the hook for something that they didn't really feel comfortable with. So, Okay, Ms. Stein. Um, there are, you have to take the whole package, and I haven't had time to study it, but there was a letter number one from our lawyer, then some letters that uh, had been put out by CPA got sent to our lawyer, and then there was a second letter from our lawyer and that's the letter that I'm just not totally comfortable with at that m at this moment. Now I admit I haven't had it. I didn't expect to present <laughs> this tonight, <laughs> so I caught a little bit off guard, or I would have studied <coughs> that letter a little bit more and talked to some people about it. But um, it's just not um, as crisp, shall we say, as I would like it to be. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wald. Oh, just partly. I question and a comment. I think Ms. Stein can correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm not mistaken, this was something that was taken off the table because of questions about its viability. Right. And I seem to recall it had to do with, the, a little bit like the soccer fields, the question as to whether the housing was created with CPA money, right? Whether the, what? Whether the housing was created with CPA money. And, uh, are we that is correct. Are we restoring some that is that correct. Turned on? Uh, you know, that said, I'm not a lawyer. We pay someone who is, so he answers these questions. And I think I'm perfectly happy, happy to refer to town council on this one. Right. Yeah, I've reviewed this, and I, I know the CPA committee voted, I think it was 6-2 to two to recommend uh, this to town meeting. I have reviewed the opinion from town council about whether or not this type of expenditure uh, is meets the eligibility criteria for an affordable housing expenditure, and I'm comfortable with the opinion uh, that it does. And... Uh, I think the CPA legislation uh, was filled with all kinds of common sense language about, uh, you know, this allows us, makes clear that an, an expenditure to fix 40-year-old kitchens in an affordable housing development are an appropriate use of uh, preservation funds so that we can make these remaining units, those people live in dignity with the uh, renovations that are made, and made. so uh, mm -hmm. I was comfortable with the opinion. I hope we can get this done. Yeah. 
It, it's a complicated case because the act says no rehabilitation if you did not build the housing with CPA money, okay? So it's a question of if the buildings are in such bad repair that they wouldn't be usable, which you could only, almost make that argument about the electrical work, um, then maybe that would be in a different category. But I don't know that how the Community Preservation Act people would feel about it um, or if they would feel we're over the line one way or the other. I just don't know, and I, that's why I'm going to abstain at this point. Okay, Mr. Wolf. Yeah, well, on that point, and to pick up on what Mr. Mazzanti and Ms. Brewer said, but maybe first, the CPA people being Community Preservation Alliance? Pardon me? There, there are no CPA people, really. There's the state and what the law says. There's the Community Preservation Alliance, which is an informal organization. It has no binding authority, but has a record of trying to interpret the law and give advice. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's not as if there's a CPA, a CPA office you can talk to in Boston that's going to answer your questions. As you said, it's evolving law. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, I think what, to what Mr. Mizanti said about dignity is important and what Ms. Brewer said about housing in general. We've done a very poor job in some ways of taking care of affordable housing for our population. And, you know, safety, this talks about ground fault interrupter. You know what those are, that's so you don't get electrocuted when you have outlets next to, next to sinks. I mean, the combination of dignity and safety and the fact that we are periodically threatened with a shortage of affordable housing. We've heard Mr. Weiss come and talk about that, about the 10% rule and so forth. So, you know, if there's something I want to take a chance on, I think it would be affordable housing. And uh, j to elaborate a little bit more on Mr. Wald's point, not to speak for him, but um, this isn't like um, if we if we pass a bylaw that is not legitimate and the attorney general's office turns us down, there is no body to turn us down. We would pass this and then it would go to court. That's sued, right? right. That's how that's how it gets challenged. That's what happened with sure. um, the the situation in Newton. Was it Newton? The playgrounds there. So if so council, and obviously anybody can sue anyone for anything at any time, that's just a given. Um, council's interpretation is that this is fully defensible in court if we were to be sued. So that's kind of, that's kind of the bottom line of, of what we're talking about here. Okay, further discussion on this item. All right, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm abstaining. And abstaining. So that's, Ms. Brewer, did you vote? I voted yes. You voted yes. So that's four in favor, zero opposed, one abstention. Okay. And I, I do think it would be helpful if we uh, could, to Ms. Brewer's point, get um, further clarification from town council about why exactly yep. he's comfortable with this. All right. There are two letters from town council at yeah, this we'll point. Yeah, we'll forward those to you. Great. Ms. Dodd, okay. going to talk to all of us. Um, so I don't think we need, uh, how, sh how will we do this? So we, this I is can. one article. Um, because they'll, they'll do them and I'll just report, so. Okay, um, so how do you feel about part C? Would you rather speak to part C or would you rather have someone else speak to part C? Uh, this is, um, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, um, how do you guys feel? Who would like to talk to it? So I, I, you know, I'm I'm perfectly comfortable with you speak to it, just like <laughs> Mr. Hayden speaking to one that he sure. opposed. But I mean, so so I you'll can report right. You know? So you're representing the select board's perspective, right. which I think you understand. We simply right. didn't want to so oppose Ford it, and yet no you can position, speak to and then your there was me. Right. Okay. And so that that lets you that lets you capture everything. Okay. Right. Good. If you're comfortable with that, then that sounds good. All right. We start waving our hands wildly. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so representing we us. covered all of the articles that we had on our list tonight. Hooray! Hooray! That's amazing. Um, too bad the CPA folks missed all our fun. Um, and did have I missed anything? Is there a part E here that we missed? Um, no, I think the CPA. The agenda says A through E, but maybe that was just my mistake. I think we've it's done only A everything. through D, is that correct? Yeah, I don't I think there so. is. Okay. An e. Then. Double check. <clears throat> what do 
before I put E3D. E3D, you said? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, you think that was fun? Wait till next week. <laughs> okay. Uh, FY14 budget discussion. So this is really uh, mostly a, a status update and any other questions or comments, folks. Uh, and status update, I'm sorry. I meant to say status update on state budget situation and any questions or comments folks have that they didn't get to ask when we talked about all the different divisions of the operating budget. Mr. Pooler, thank you very much for coming in. Right. Mr. Musanti. Yes, and I'm looking for my notes. Um, okay. Story of my life. <laughs> Yeah, so you know you've you've taken action on the entire town budget proposals, with the exception of schools and library operating, which you'll do next week. Mm -hmm. So that uh, that is you know great great progress. Uh, there's two items about how the state budget deliberations impact us that I want to update you on briefly. Uh, the House Ways and Means Committee in Boston has released their recommended. Uh, FY14 state budget. Um, the full House is expected to debate and vote on that budget uh, next week, the week of the 22nd. So we should have a House budget enacted by the end of April. Uh, the Senate Ways and Means Committee will come out sometime around May 15th, I believe. Uh, again, with the objective of the full Senate acting on the their version of the state budget by the end of May they'll spend a portion of June reconciling the two and vote a, a final budget to recommend to the governor who will then have 10 days to approve or line item veto and then the legislature with a two-thirds vote and both branches can choose whether or not to override some or all of those uh, vetoes to the extent the governor does that. So magically, uh, on or near midnight on June 30th, we'll have a adopted state budget. Uh, but on the House side, uh, the budget uh, is, uh, in terms of revenue sharing to cities and towns, uh, there's a little bit more money coming back to communities. Uh, there is, uh, in the unrestricted general government aid accounts, uh, there is, I believe it's a $21 million line item was recommended for funding. The governor had recommended $31 million. That would distribute to Amherst using the uh, uh, existing uh, funding formula, uh, about 168000 more than the governor had recommended and more than we assumed in our budget. Uh, there are a handful of other areas on both the uh, revenue side and on our uh, state assessments that are different uh, in, 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 those ca in those cases lower. Uh, lower uh, on a couple of the revenue accounts by small amounts and then the assessments are roughly 68,000 higher net uh, from the governor's proposal that we had factored into the budget. So the net effect of all that uh, if the House budget was to become the final budget in July, it uh, would be about 93000 uh to the good um, in terms of net revenue. Um, we have a gap of about 60000 uh, or 68, no, 68, 69,000 uh, hand signals uh, uh, to have a truly balanced budget. Um, so the first... 68 or 69,000 of that would would essentially cover that with no no action uh, necessary um, and the consensus uh, recommendation back out to the boards and committees from the budget coordinating group at their uh, March uh, I think it was March 28th meeting and you had the uh, summary points I believe in last week's meeting packet basically said if, if at the end of the day our state revenue sharing is higher than we assume that we should first retire whatever small gap we have, which is what I just described, and then we, we should resist the urge uh, to expend or appropriate any additional dollars from that. And that, you know, that'll just help us out in terms of, uh, you know, remaining conservative and prudent on our revenue estimating and might even help us a little bit on our reserve growth at the end of the next fiscal year. Um, yeah, 
So that's that's where we are on the House, and they'll be voting next week, and we'll have a House budget. And you want to talk about the new developments in the transportation? Yeah, uh, the transportation bill, uh, there is very active debate and action going on uh, in Boston. Uh, the House had recommended, uh, approved a $500 million package uh, per year in new uh, new revenues that by 2018 would be up to $500 million. Um, um, that had additional monies for uh, uh, a variety of transportation needs, uh, but the ones affected cities and, in cities and towns are regional transit authorities would receive substantially more monies. Uh, they would be forward funded so that uh, you wouldn't, uh, PVTA and others wouldn't have to borrow their entire operating subsidy from the state and then have the state pay us back the following year. Uh, you know, borrowing to pay the uh, uh, operating budget, kind of crazy. So that that requires an infusion of money to make the leap year, which next year would be. Uh, so that's a good thing. And then there would be additional monies uh, built into the base uh, aid from the state to allow uh, preservation of existing service, uh, the need to push off for some indefinite period, uh, the need for fare hikes or service reductions, and, and then may, in fact, result in uh, targeted service improvements. And the PVTA would intend to complete an exhaustive system-wide uh, route analysis uh, by early next calendar year. And you know we'll be very engaged on the Amherst side. And I'll let you know when there might be opportunities for Amherst input on service levels for that. So the both in, so that's in the House bill. The Senate bill is similar to that, but a larger amount uh, for uh, uh, local road money. Uh, their package, uh, looking at uh, also looking at uh, cigarette taxes and uh, a three cent increase on the gas tax, uh, which is then indexed to inflation, would generate by 2018 a net increase of about 800 million a year. Um, so that would also be very positive news for the regional transit. Um, both the House and the Senate proposals would, um, uh, according to the House and Senate Ways and Means chairs, say that our local Chapter 90 road grants would see a 50% annual increase. Uh, you know, the amount allocated each year would be 50% higher than the current number. Um, that would allow Chapter 90 funds coming back to the town of Amherst to go from roughly 800,000 uh, in the coming year to a little over 1.2 million. And that would be each year over the next five years. Um, that's a huge step forward uh, and allows us to address, you know, several million dollars more of uh, road, ne road uh, repair needs in the town of Amherst over the next five years. And uh, so we're very encouraged by that. Uh, the House and Senate, uh, because their versions of the bill are, are different in some cases, although the revenue sources are, are, are the big ones are the same, uh, they'll be reconciling those differences and then voting a final bill. And we are encouraging our legislators to uh, support the higher amount uh, and roughly along the lines of the Senate uh, Senate version, so we can get on with the work as soon as possible. So that's a big deal. That's a long time coming, and uh, will make a big difference. So, as you noted, that all this still remains in flux. The governor had originally been threatening to veto, kind of basically anything that wasn't his proposal, but there's been a lot of movement on that. Uh, yeah, and he's he has sig the governor has signaled uh, much more openness on the Senate, you know, the path that the Senate has uh, gone on, and we heard at Senator Rosenberg's municipal conference in Northampton uh, a week ago Saturday from the Senate Transportation Chair uh, Senator McGee, you know, uh, even though there's a lot of passion, particularly in our area, about you know the the positives related to uh, a more progressive state income tax structure. Uh, it's really about the art of getting any bill through the legislature, and there just wasn't sufficient majority support on the income tax piece. So they've come up with some alternative ways to fund a very significant uh, uh, investment in transportation that gets about 80% of the governor's number. And so I think 
we're on the cusp of a deal here that I hope we can actually implement because I'm very much on the implementation side of this and want to put the monies to work to fix up uh, a bunch of our streets that badly need it. Thank you. And so before I go to comments, um, the uh, Senate bill, uh, Senate recommendation also includes education funding, which had sort of fallen out of the House bill. Yeah, much less prominently uh, uh, reported, but there are education dollars uh, that uh, the, s the House and the Senate, for that matter, there's uh, uh, higher ed money, which would be of help to uh, the UMass system. Uh, and help hold the line, at least in the near term, on additional uh, tuition and fee hikes. Um, the, uh, there's also, uh, we're, we're curious to see what the Senate does in their budget. Uh, they might allocate some of those funds for higher ed and also K-12 uh, education and, and, and pre-K. Thank you. Questions or comments for Mr. Mislinski? All right, so basically stay tuned is the, <laughs> is the <laughs> bottom line with state stuff because uh, it's, uh, it's always changing, but, um, but it's basically all moving towards the good <laughs> lately, so, uh, so that's a plus. Okay, town manager's report. Town manager's report, okay. Okay, first, uh, uh, another milestone, uh, we have uh, our town hall emergency generator that was funded uh, through the capital budget process uh, um, is installed, has been commissioned, and um, is operable. Uh, and you wouldn't know by walking by there when it's operating because you can't hear it. Uh, and uh, uh, it became operational on April 10th, and uh, I want to just commend the team of staff who worked on that. Uh, Ron Bahanowitz took the lead on that as our facilities director uh, with the support of the capital, uh, the J joint capital planning and, uh, committee and town meeting. Um, but our electricians at the DPW, Fred Hartwell and Mike Moore, uh, this and other projects did a great job because it was a very complicated electrical job to uh, make the appropriate testing and connections into the town hall system and uh, it's a natural gas uh, generator so it's quiet there's no odor uh, and puts us in very good position if and when we have our next extended uh, uh, power outage uh, in terms of operating our, our communication system our, our computer servers and those kinds of things so uh, so that was that's a, a good thing questions or comments about the generator Right. Uh, next, uh, uh, staff recognitions. Uh, uh, you know, we talked about the marathon and the tragic, uh, tragic incident uh, at the end of the marathon. But uh, Amy Rusicki was here earlier at TPW. She uh, uh, ran in the marathon, a very competitive time, so competitive that she was far away from the finish line by uh, by the time of that incident. But uh, uh, She's doing great work for us. I just wanted to recognize her, and that's another aspect of her, <laughs> her life outside of work that uh, uh, is great. Uh, the uh, recent and upcoming activities, uh, Civil War tablets. Uh, here we are in the sesquicentennial year, anniversary of the Civil War. Uh, um, we are working very hard, uh, again, for Ron Bahanowitz uh, to do the necessary uh, reissue of a request for proposals to allow the engineering and other work uh, for the installation of the Civil War tablets that have been restored with CPA monies to be installed in this room on the opposite wall. Uh, we are putting the finishing touches on a grant application to the state. There's a small grant program. Uh, uh, that would be used to fund up to $5,000, and our, our grant application will be to um, create and install interpretive uh, materials that would be accompany the tablet. So it would tell the Amherst story. Uh, and we think, in addition to being in the room here and perhaps in the foyer out here, uh, but probably kind of the... Uh, a path from the main entrance of town hall up the steps and tell a little story along the way with the interpretive signs and be another uh, very nice complimentary piece that brings the tablets to uh, life and tells the 
you know, the story of the Amherst uh, citizens who were were uh, active and who are represented on those tablets. Yes. Um, do you have any um, sense of what the timing would be for the RFP about when, what the goal would be for installation? The goal the is to uh, have those installed uh, this calendar year. That's great. Yep. Um, okay. So the grant app will be submitted any day now, literally, and uh, we'll know quite soon. And Stan Rosenberg uh, is co-chair of the legislature's sesquic Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission and alerted us to this grant opportunity. So we want to take full advantage of that. Thank you. Um, Any questions or comments about the Civil War stuff? Mr. Hayden. Sesquicentennial a third time. <laughs> Sesquicentennial a third time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and all right. that's all I have. OK, any other questions or comments from Mr. Misanti? Oh, sorry. Um, anything we should know from the weekend? How did things go? The joint patrols with UMass, how the ambulance sure. situation is going? Uh, overall, a, uh, uh, a, a, a pretty good weekend. Um, it was our second really full weekend with those additional resources uh, uh, that have been uh, contributed by UMass uh, monies for um, uh, two additional uh, ambulance crews, paramedic uh, level ambulances uh, through a, a detail ambulances. Uh, that allowed us to have a total of six ambulances out on the street available to respond. Uh, uh, so um, I, I don't know if we had any particular moments in time where all six were in service, but we were adequately covered over the Thursday, Friday, Saturday night period. Uh, we also had uh, uh, concert events at the Mullen Center both Friday night, you know, Saturday night and Sunday night. Uh, again, in cooperation with Mullen Center management and UMass, uh, there were additional ambulance uh, personnel uh, paid for by the Mullen Center on duty, and they were put to good use, uh, meeting the needs of uh, uh, medical needs of concert goers. That again has a, a domino effect on uh, our ability of our on the street ambulances to be res able to respond most quickly uh, all over all over the community. Uh, the uh, joint patrols with the university police and Amherst police also uh, were in play again this past weekend, particularly in the Fearing Phillips uh, uh, street neighborhoods. Uh, there were, um, I'm trying to remember the count, uh, there were, um, I believe a total of about 21 arrests or summons, uh, mostly related to alcohol-related uh, calls for service. And again, we thought that overall went went pretty well, and we're we're uh, actively planning for uh, this coming weekend with uh, all of those resources and the state police. Thank you. Questions or comments about that? I'll just note, uh, I did the walk this way thing, the overnight Saturday, and um, in doing that, uh, I saw a, a lots of UMass police, both in their own cruisers as well as riding jointly in the in the cruisers with the Amherst police, and um, I was just so grateful to see that, and I think it sends a really strong message about the town and the university working together on this issue, taking it very seriously, and really being a, a team to address it. Um, and. Uh, and certainly the more cops you have on the streets, um, the, the bigger deterrent impact that that has. And I think that there's no no question that uh, the, the presence was strong, uh, visual presence was strong, and that, that hopefully contributed to, uh, to the weekend being successful. And we just hope that continues. So just want to make sure that we, we really appreciate I UMass taking part this way. This is a change. It's a change for the better. It, it's a change that we want to encourage. So to encourage it, we must also appreciate it. All right, you're all set. Yeah, the, I, I, the number on the on the police summons and arrests was actually twelve. Twelve. Wow. Yeah. It's like twenty-one. It's just backwards. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at my notes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Very good. Uh, then moving along to member reports, liaison and representative reports since we last met. Uh, anyone? Ms. Stein. Um, <coughs> April 9th. The AGCOM met, they had a quorum despite having two resignations. They got caught up on minutes. They discussed the summer 
um, farmers market and bringing it to its full potential for Amherst farmers. A uh, possible consultant um, might be hired for what um, what the farmer or what the market should be like. Um, then they discussed a number of ideas from the forum they had, um, what's growing on. Um, these were ideas that would help the farmers move their products and um, possibly have the establishment of an Amherst farm. On Thursday, April 11th, um, from three to five, I went to an exhibit that was very interesting. Seniors and Amherst College students collaborated and uh, researched um, Amherst College um, uh, previous students um, right up through the modern day, and they made a book um, showing the history of um, these um, uh, Amherst people, um, and it's and then the, the exhibit was um, full size. Um, oh, maybe four foot high um, by three foot wide poster board um, pages from the book. Um, and it was very interesting. Many, of course, of the early Amherst students were went on to become missionaries, and so they reported on their lives from disparate parts of the world. And um, the, I suggested they, they were not selling the books. They were strictly for the seniors who had participated in, and, and students who had participated in this collaborative project. But I suggested they put one in the Jones Library because it's really uh, amazing work that they put together right through the modern era where somebody comes out as gay. And so it dealt with a whole range of issues from, from missionaries to, um, so that was, that was interesting. And then uh, one, two, three, four of us were at the Pi Kappa Phi dinner that night. Um, and this is, uh, I shouldn't talk too much, but basically this is a very interesting fraternity um, that really is um, uh, participating in a number of good things, but their main emphasis is on helping disabled people. So they build one wheelchair ramp per year um, for various um, buildings that need them where there are uh, wheelchair bound people. And that was a very interesting meeting, this or dinner. Um, they were very gracious and they also participated in the cleanup um, and will continue to do so every week, um, uh, helping, helping the town in that way. Friday, I went, I represented the town, I hope that's okay, <laughs> uh, at the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Atkinson Family Practice, that building that was built on, sorry, Research Drive, and, and that was a very interesting, very festive occasion. And then I had promised last week that I would try to explain about the audit committee report. The financial statement, um, page 17, seems to show that there's a $1.85 million excess of revenue, but that really doesn't take into account expenditures that have to come out of free cash for the um, snow and ice uh, deficits that were excessive uh, for the grant match for War Memorial Pool. And that's just the way the audit people do the accounting. That figure simply indicates that that amount um, is, can be used to cover those deficits. It really is not cash sitting around. In fact, in July 1, 2011, our reserves totaled $4,167,028. In 2012, it was $4,326,501. So our free cash only grew by $159,473, according to Mr. Pooler. So um, that's uh, the best I can explain the audit report. They simply account, uh, do accounting to a different set of rules. 
Thank you. Thank you for, for going back into that, as you said you would. That's much appreciated. Questions or comments from Ms. Stein? I'll just note a couple of other things about the fraternity dinner. Um, oh, d just to clarify, the, um, it, the cleanup is every other week for the rest of the semester, not every week, but that's perfectly fine. Um, and I just wanted to note that uh, I sent around the PowerPoint presentation that they uh, gave to us that night. I sent it to the select board so that we would all have it and be able to pass it along potentially as a resource. And uh, one of the folks I passed it on to, I should have copied Ms. Brewer on this, it was um, the chair of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. Um, uh, oh, did you? Okay. Well, so, I wrote to him about <laughs> um, so, uh, so I had spoken with one of the members there, and they had had some contact with uh, Nate Malloy, who's the staff person, but um, really not contact with the committee. So now we're kind of closing the loop on that relationship. Mm -hmm. It seems like a really good... Um, a really good relationship to to develop there. I mean, the the great alignment of of uh, interests and advocacy with big strong labor, as <laughs> the uh, as the gentleman of the fraternity uh, indicated to us. These are the same folks who went during the snowstorm Nemo and dug out the Chestnut Court. Um, so really, it, it was a it was a great evening. It was great to meet make their acquaintance. It was great to have conversations over dinner with them about kind of the issues of the day. Um, really great to get their perspective on things and uh, I, I, I really commend them for their outreach to the town to invite us to, to come there for that. So that is all. Okay, other folks liaison reports? Ms. Brewer. Um, absolutely. It was it was a great dinner. Um, they uh, it was really great being in a purposefully built uh, building. It was built as a sorority, but it's now a fraternity. And aside from that issue, um, it you know it's not just cramming a bunch of people <laughs> into a little tiny house. It actually makes sense in terms of the layout and stuff, and so that's nice to see. And they were just all very charming and very um, helpful in terms of us trying to understand some of their perspectives on things. And they I, I heard over and over again from the members that they were all people who, before they came to college, thought, I'm not going to join a fraternity. Not a fraternity. That's a, a frat. But instead, they joined a fraternity. So they, they make a big uh, difference between what those two things are. And I should also mention, it is funny with the DAC situation, because they talk, They mentioned to us this film that they're bringing, Phi, the Pi Kappa Phi is bringing to town, and they wanted to talk to DAC about promoting it, because it's a film about people in wheelchairs using cameras. And it turns out that s because a couple of the DAAC members are already heavily involved or employed by Stavros, Stavros is the group that they work with to build the wheelchair ramps. So, I mean, th the circles are connected, but just not quite in the way that they could have been. And so strengthening that connection. So, you know, some of the people on DAAC kn knew all about them and some of them didn't. And so it, it is really fun to be able to keep making those connections all the way around. So thank you for that, because I was going to do that, but I knew that uh, Nate was working on it as well. So thank you. In terms of other reports, the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Group met last week, and I went to the tail end of their meeting because it was right after the dinner, and um, or had started before the dinner, really. And they had reports from the various agencies that they funded, and they have put out the reports as to you know what's happening so far with the money that went to those particular agencies, so it was a nice chance for a report back, people to understand what's going on. Of course, the big question of the day is what's going to happen in the future? And so I know they're planning to talk to the town manager about what his vision is for future. Is it that we would assume that we're not coming back to you know being a point off on mini entitlement, which the theory may be at this point that the state maybe doesn't want to do mini entitlement communities anymore. And if we're going to go for a competitive grant, there was certainly some support on the Black Grant Advisory Committee members' part to say, if it's going to take us longer to be competitive, so to speak, in, for a competitive grant, that we might have to skip a year in application, that that would be something that you know they would understand that perspective and that they looked forward to talking to town meeting. You know, after we got through town meeting and we found out what the state said uh, this June, since we won't have any idea until June, for sure what's going to happen. Just you know, It's just too unclear what's happening at the state level, but then what their role might be. You know, We had, obviously, a discussion last time, as I looked toward the table, for the petitioner who was here talking about, well, when we have a social service agency item again, which we may or may not ever have again. So just, you know, what, what role might they function? And um, so they're just 
trying to get their arms around what that might look like. And they also have a little bit of money that they may need to reprogram from previous from previous capital expenditures, which is always kind of a good problem to have, except that it has to be spent quickly. And so they, they might ha- you might see a little bit of information about that out there. And I don't think anything else has happened since last week because it's just been so exciting. We just met. Although... <laughs> When we were talking about announcements, so that I don't lose sight of it, there's a thing we were all invited to next week as well, associated with, this wasn't a particular fraternity, this is seems sort of like our coffee hour, but it's their version of our coffee hour over at UMass next week. Yeah, so there's a student achievement um, reception and then student achievement awards. Um, I would really like to be able to go to it. It's the same time the... The awards part is the same time as the warrant review, so I've got to see what the deal is with okay. whether I need to present any s- articles at the warrant review or not. Um, so I got to figure that out, Miss Stein. Did that invitation come by email? Yes, and it came to all of us by email. But yeah, but we actually got multiples of it. Email. Some of us yeah. are so far behind. It might have gotten email. By the time email. I find it, it'll yeah. be missed. We've got, a, we've got a few days still for the RSVP. So right, but I, what, what my point was going to be is that beyond the fact, isn't it exciting, more and more things we get to go to in the spring, I appreciate that they invited us. Also, if there is, if you won't be there to represent us, we always look to you for all the UMass things um, to let us know so that somebody shows up for yeah. this thing because it, it's on an odd night, a Tuesday night? I think it's Tuesday night, yeah. So Yeah, the um, 23rd, I think it is, yeah. So. Yeah, so I'll definitely go to the reception. I hope to get to go to some or all of the awards, um, and I'm not sure. But uh, it really is, it's a good community opportunity to be able to see, like, really the best side of students. I mean, these are their, right. these are their achievement awards, you know. And so, uh, again, um, it gives us new messages to carry to the community about really what students are like in Amherst in the majority. Okay, uh, other liaison reports? Mr. Hayden. Great. Thank you. Uh, other ways, Mr. Wald. Briefly, to underscore what everyone said about the nice evening with the fraternity and the, and the point that these people said they would never have thought of joining one, it's not a social fraternity. It's not a, it's, it's not a drinking club. It's an academic fraternity, uh, engineering in particular, though not all the members are engineers. So we should underscore that. You know, there are these professional organizations, and they really stress academic achievement, too. They require people to keep a certain grade point average. They provide assistance for those who need st- you know, structured study time and so forth. So it was really quite rewarding to be there, and I second everything you said. Just two very brief things. The Public Arts is this Kickstarter campaign going on to acquire the portal sculpture in Kendrick Park, and I gather there's some issues about how to facilitate or uh, even just arrange at all the transfer of money from that to town coffers, but that effort is underway, and I think they really would like people to contribute. And Historical Commission met on April 9th when Ms. Brewer and I were at ACTV, so I was unable to go. But the upshot of that that's most relevant here is that the commission voted unanimously to make a formal request to select board to set up a committee to study the possibility of a local historic district in the uh, Sunset Pleasant Street area. This is something, again, an an expression of neighborhood, neighborhood concern about deteriorating quality of the area Uh, demolitions and things like that. So that'll be coming our way at some point. But the the decision was basically made in November, but they wanted to wait until other things were in place, like the Dickinson District Committee underway and the North Amherst Study Committee appointed. So that'll be coming to us at some point. What what and when the action will be, of course, is another matter, but just so we have that on radar screen. Okay, thank you. Questions or comments for Mr. Wald? Ms. Brewer. And you probably don't want to tell them what I'll say now, which is like, yeah, wait in line <laughs> because we haven't even started appointing the Dickinson group. I mean, the, the not Dickinson group, the North Amherst group. We talked about maybe the next time having Dickinson do it. Yeah, it, it's all important. I'm just not sure how it's all going to get done. Well, that, that's also why we may, there may be ways to, to accomplish some of the same goals more quickly. I don't know, as a substitute or as a preliminary step, there might be other measures we could put in place that would achieve some protections. But yes, that is an issue of staff time and then just sort of sequencing how long this all takes. 
So I think town staff, which has to carry this out, is very, very aware of that. Okay. Other liaison reports? Um, I'll note uh, Campus and Community Coalition, so I already said that I did the Walk This Way thing Saturday night. Um, great group of volunteers, students, um, administrators from the university. I'll be doing it again next Saturday. Um, I'm not sure how effective it is, I gotta say. Um, it, I don't think we were terribly effective in rerouting students at all, um, but I do think it was effective in kind of spreading awareness about, shh, you know, remember when you're in the neighborhoods, uh, especially when you're coming home tonight, A, try and avoid the neighborhoods, but B, if you're in the neighborhoods, try and keep quiet, you know, quiet down, These, there are families here, et cetera. Um, and uh, I don't know, just kind of having a, an adult presence out there then kind of felt good. And uh, the, the students, a lot of them thanked us. They thought we were a community watch and they thought we were kind of looking out for their safety and stuff. So it was interesting. We, we had a whole range of, of reactions, but, uh, um, it, it was interesting. Um, so they're doing a kind of formal feedback on how this is working, or not formal, informal feedback on, on how we think this is working. Uh, the final weekend of it is next week, Saturday. I'll be doing it again. Anyone who wants to join us? A lot of fun. Get a bright green t-shirt. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, not exactly campus and community coalition related, but just part of the UMass stuff is... Um, Last night, I was a judge at a Greek Week event. The, um, there's, the, there's a very massive event that happens in Mullen Center. It's the first time in Mullen Center. It's been in uh, different places in the past. Um, that is, they do a lip sync contest. They call it lip sync. It's actually much bigger than that. It's like a giant choreographed dance routine and lip sync that there were, um, I think there were, are there like seven teams? Yeah, there were seven teams that must have had 30 to 50 kids each on the teams um, and fraternities and sororities together um, in each group and uh, and so it was both that that big choreographed lip sync dance routine that was just impressive beyond all get out and uh, also what they call the Greek god and goddess uh, competition <laughs> afterwards that was uh, answering questions and talent and uh, that was it was a lot of fun to participate in so I was a judge along with a um, a, an administrator from UMass, someone who works in a student, uh, student university programming council, I think that's what they work with, and um, Sam the Minuteman. So uh, the three of us were judges, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, the green team won. <laughs> um, so yes, <laughs> they were great. Um, so there's that. I think those are all the things. Walk this way. So I'm gonna read my writing. Yeah. So I think that's all. We meet again in six days. That is the 22nd of April. Um, so I have no chairs report either. This is just all kind of one and the same. Um, we did all the untimed items. We already talked about the coffee hour, so the public is uh, invited and again reminded about the coffee hour for Harris and Greg on April 29th at 5 p.m. in this room. Um, I think that's all. Anything else we need to talk about before next Monday? Mr. Hayden, we're so glad you're back. <laughs> and without objection, this meeting is adjourned at exactly 9.30 p.m. Thank you very much.